It's the Wickersham Leader Show with today's episode, Going Green. Whoa, well, you know what? Eh, we can skip it. Whatever. Here we are, Toontown Rompa. Are you excited for the next thrilling adventure of all these people who may or may not start hating each other the second anyone turns their backs? I am. Because last time, Clerk Clara died because of Clef's uh, a murder attempt that was successful. It was a successful murder attempt. So now we're down two people. And uh, who we have left... We'll see what will happen as we get into the following chapter, because who knows what'll happen when you put a bunch of tunes together and force them to live, force them to kill each other. And let me just turn on the music so we shall. Dibs on Riggy killing Harry. You really think Riggy's gonna kill Harry? Oh, shoot, hold on. Uh, there it is, main menu. Yeah, I need to turn on the music. Didn't even know Toontown Online still existed. Well, it kind of doesn't. Alright, that's, uh, let's turn that up a little bit more. If someone doesn't kill Harry, Harry will kill someone. Well, that's generally how it goes, right? Alright. Now, let's see, where were we? I think this was ours. It's been many hours since the trial. After what happened, that horrible event, it ended both Clara and Clef dead. How. How do we move on from that? Suddenly I hear the faintest knock on my door. Reflexively, my body moved over to the door, and when I opened it... Hey, Flippy. Oh, hello, Tom. Seems like everyone else is in their huts. I can imagine. What are you doing here? Honestly, I don't know. I just thought you'd need some company. We lost a good member of the Silly Street crew today, but... We at least made it through the trial, right? I suppose so. And, well, even if it was a rocky road, you helped solve the case. I only helped on accident. That's not true. Helping on accident is still helping. Bringing up how Clef could have been damaged another way made me realize how he drained himself. Without that, I don't think we would still be here now. Clef would have gotten away with it, and no one else would be alive to tell the tale. So, please, Tom, it doesn't matter if you feel smart or not. Everyone, including you, helped in that trial. Even if someone only brought up wrong theories, disproving them still brought us closer to the truth. Even I brought up some wrong points, but trying and failing is still useful. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Are you sure you're not a therapist? I'm sure I'm not, but as someone once told me, you don't gotta be one to make someone's day. <laughs> Thanks, Flippy. I'm sure we'll never have to solve another case. Especially after seeing what happens to those that get caught. Yeah. If someone thinks being boiled alive is worth killing, then... No. No one would do it. There's no reason to even think about someone doing it after what happened. I'm sure you're right, Flippy. Yeah. Call it wishful thinking, but... I'm sure you'll keep us together, Flippy. I'll try my hardest to, Tom. Well, I suppose this is good night. Good night, Flippy. Good night, Tom. Really, we'll make sure we stick together. For you, Clara. I'll never forget you. No, you fools, this never works. <laughs> Even though the nighttime announcement hadn't played yet, I'm still exhausted. I drifted into sleep quickly. Attention all tunes, it is now 8 a.m. I have a special announcement to make. Meet me at the plaza in 15 minutes. Oh no, don't be another motive already. Regardless, I have to go. First thing I saw coming out of their house was actually... Oh, Harry, you got out quick. Don't talk to me. What? You and Paula always said no one would kill, that no one would snap, but guess what? Clef was planning to kill since he woke up two days ago. Harry, I... 
I'm only outside early because I stood at my door the entire night. If it wasn't a rule that I had to go to a meeting by Flunky, I'd still be inside. I'm going right back into my room after this. So, don't ever talk to me again if you're just going to lie. I never wanted what I said to become a lie. Did you overhear that? I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but yes. I see. I suppose Harry has lost all trust in us, or maybe even everyone. Yeah. Well, I suppose we cannot waste any more time. Let's go to the plaza, Flippy. Yeah, let's go. Paul and I headed over to the plaza with others coming out of their huts and following as well. It didn't take long for everyone to arrive. In fact, it probably took less than five minutes for all of us to gather. And in waiting for Flunky to appear above us, we simply stared at each other. He lost all human connection. It's already begun. None of them were humans to begin with. And after what seems like forever, someone spoke up. Good morning, guys? Yeah, good morning. And just when we thought we'd go into more silence... What's with all the glum faces? It's already the next day, buckos. Yeah, it's the next day. So what? So there's no point in sulking over the past, buckos. We solved the mystery, everybody. You should be proud of yourselves. Proud of sentencing someone to their death? Someone who could have changed for the better, but now won't get the chance to? Oh, come on. He knew what he was getting himself into, didn't he? Perhaps, but our victory shouldn't be something we celebrate. For the sake of Clara and Clef, we have to promise each other we'll never have to partake in another trial ever again. That's not going to work. I believe that we can avoid further casualties. The question is, does everyone else feel the same way? Harry is evidence that I'm wrong. Can we just wait for Flunky to announce whatever he wants to tell us? We went through a lot yesterday. There's no point in sulking over the past. Ricky, it literally happened yesterday. Agreed. Speaking of which, what's taking Flunky so long? It may not have been 15 minutes yet, however you'd think his monitor would have begun broadcasting by now. Maybe we won't have a meeting after all. Ah, it seems you all took less time than I imagined. I'm surprised you all arrived so quickly. I would have thought after yesterday's trial you all wouldn't have any drive at all. Just get on with your message. I don't want to have to stay with these idiots any longer. Very well. Before anyone asks, no, this is not a mode of announcement. That will happen soon. Even though you tunes don't deserve anything. For the sake of this final exam, we're going to let you explore past Toontown Central. Yeah, let's go! More specifically, Donald's Dock. Oh, we're going in playground order! Wait, we're gonna get to go to the dock? Don't look so happy. He just wants to have a new place to kill in. Oh, right. But like, hey, we're finally gonna get to go someplace else. Let me guess, Toontown Central will be closed off as countermeasure? To both of our surprises, no. However, as there is also a party hat building in the dock, I'll say this right now that it'll take you to the campsite. Of course, to not make anything overly confusing, the party hat building in Toontown Central will no longer take you anywhere. That is all. I'm not gonna trust that. I'm gonna gather anything useful from my shop just in case TTC gets closed off. I can't exactly think of anything I'd still need from the schoolhouse. Maybe pens and papers, I suppose. Flippy, do you need anything from your office? I don't think so, but if Toontown Central isn't blocked off, I'll check later. I have everything I'd need with me already. Kinda wish I could get to my house, but I guess I didn't really have anything there. Well, I had a little garden to grow flowers for squirting flowers, but I guess I could just make a new one later. I am sure you, Coach Z, Flippy, and I will make some beautiful flowers in Daisy Gardens. Oh yeah, you're right! Did you already forget about that? Maybe. Well, time to go, buckos! To the dock we go! Riggy headed over to Punchline Place. I guess I should try to be like Riggy, but... Oh, jeez. Hello, Prat7. We got a raid. Nice. A raid. It's like he doesn't even care about what happened. I know Clef killed Clara, but he was still part of the host crew. Uh, wait for me, Riggy. And there goes Bessie. Well, are you all just gonna stand there? We need to follow them in case there's anything dangerous. You're right, Giggles. Sure. Toontown Rump, we've not heard of that? Oh, well, this is very exciting. And so, aside from Lou and Pete, we headed to Punchline Place. Oh, right, Harry wanted to immediately go back to his hut, but now he'll have to follow us to at least the dock. And so we traveled through Punchline Place. We didn't say anything to each other, and eventually... We caught up to Bessie and Riggy. However, right as we were about to check the entrance to Donald's docks, someone was lagging behind. Huh? Something wrong, Surly? Simply put, 
can we truly trust that nothing will be different than we remember it? Not really, but it's worth a shot to see more than just Toontown Central. Maybe I can find something fun for others to do. Something fun to prevent another killing. There would be many water-related activities if we find materials for them, so perhaps you can. Regardless, we shouldn't hold up the others too much. Ugh. Surly? Ugh. Surly, you okay? Uh, apologies, I just felt a sudden shock. You seriously shook there. Was it just that? It's nothing to worry about, trust me. Ugh, oh, my clipboard. I know this is sudden, however. Could I stay behind? I want to see if Toontown Central will really be kept open or not. I mean, if you say so. You don't have to worry about me. I'll be back soon. That was strange. Well, the others have been at the end of the street for a while. I should check up on them. Barnacle Boulevard. Well, look at that. It is unlocked. I'm both excited and worried. Because it'll be safe, right? Only one way to find out. We just gotta go in. Nothing else we can do now. Here we go. Woohoo! And so we enter Donald's dock with hesitation. Lou and Pete are gathering whatever they can from their building. Surly is doing something. Our group of ten headed onwards. And the first thing we saw was... The dock as I remember it. Well, here we are. Alrighty, looks normal so far. Just because it looks normal so far doesn't mean we're in the clear. I'll go first, since I doubt our leader is willing to. Hey, come on, I was just taking a look around for a bit. Come on, Giggles, give him a break. I know you have a grudge against me, but please don't let that get in the way of exploration. It's more than just that, but sure. Lead the way, leader. Thanks. I'll be honest, he is right that I'm not really that willing to go first, but I have to. The group comes first. Golly, that's some name for a shop. Hmm. You can't read the whole thing? It reads, Blackbeard's Beauty Parlor, Peg's Legs Polished, Eye Patches Patched. Hey, I can read! Just ignore him, dear. Really? Ignoring? How childish. With your treatment of Bessie and the rest of us, you should have seen this coming. You're only saying that since... Since what? Let me guess. Because he asked Flunky a question that saved Bessie from being suspected? Old Man did his part, and even you helped clear Bessie. But you don't see Old Man treating Bessie like an idiot, do you? Alright, Prath7. I'll thank you for the raid. Hopefully we'll meet again. Flipping and I want to keep this group together, but if you keep pushing everyone away, treating them like garbage, then you can you really be surprised that we're just gonna end up ignoring you? Hmm, just keep going. You're only saying that because you know it's true. Did you not hear me? I said to continue onward. I'll keep going. Hmm, none of these doors open. Looks like it's the same as the streets in Toontown Central. Although we did skip a bunch of buildings on Silly Street, so maybe there were some buildings that could open. Even if that's the case, unless there's some magical escape portal in one of them, there's no point. And also, you didn't check all the building's doors? Well, no, but like you said, there probably wouldn't be anything inside. And hey, we still found something important. Yes, we know, the trapdoor system on that street. No, not just that, we found a blueprint about some sort of device. None of us besides Pete could even sort of read it, and even then he could only read the first two letters. So, you're saying that you found something potentially useful for their escape and didn't share it with us before? Well, uh, I guess we didn't, but like Coach Z said, we only know the first two letters. R and Wait, it's the rewritten device! Any information is valuable. You seriously thought a blueprint was not worth sharing? The other groups found nothing. That's... You're always just full of excuses, Flippy. Your anger is justifiable, Giggles, but don't point it towards Flippy. Point it towards me. I was the one that stopped the others from speaking of the blueprint. What? Flippy was about to tell you all about it before I ordered you all to investigate the trapdoors on Silly Street. I know he was going to tell you that because he said so before I stormed off in a rage because of Daisy Gardens being blocked off. Really? You were that sure Flippy was going to speak up about it? Tom realized too that Coach was trying to cover for us. And while he's right about suddenly ordering everyone to check out the trapdoor system, I didn't plan to bring up the blueprint when he said I was going to. My mind was really too occupied. But if I call out Coach Z for covering us, wouldn't that just make things worse? Coach Z is being such a nice guy, what do I do? He wants to cover for me, but I don't want it- I don't want us to- mm. I say, tell everyone the truth. No, that's wrong. 
I never told Coach Z that I was going to tell you guys about the blueprint. So you're completely in the right for blaming me, Giggles. Hmm. So you admit it, then. But it seemed your lackey was going to cover for you. Did you ask him to do that? Who are you calling a lackey? Then why else would you want to cover for him? Look, Coach Z was right about what he said, but in the end, I was the one that forgot, so don't blame him, okay? Fine, then keep going, Flippy, since you're so willing to take responsibility. I... I am. The fact that no one else stepped into that conversation. Does everyone else feel this way about me? Am I just... a leader who can't lead? I took the blame, but Coach Z doesn't even look pleased I did it. Maybe there'll be something good soon. Hmm. Perhaps. Uh, look, Giggles, something super good and unlocked HQ. So it is. Let's take a fun look inside. Us three will. You all just stay out here for a few minutes. And so those three went inside the HQ. It seems the burden of being the main leader has taken the toll on you, Flippy. You don't say. The question is now, what shall you do next? Continue leading this group or allow another person to pick up the position? I, I don't know. Hey, one bad thing won't keep you down forever. Right, Flippy? I guess so. It's just that it didn't look like you appreciated me taking the fall for the group. Look, just because it's a coach's duty to be responsible for his group doesn't mean what you did was wrong. That wasn't a yes or a no. Regardless, you are practically Flippy's right-hand man, yes? Yeah, I want to make sure no murders ever happen again. Problem is, how many of us see me as a good leader? That is a question that you can only find out by asking others directly. After all, one should try to do the work themselves. Although, I suppose I cannot fault you for relying on Coach Z. Trust me, buddy, Flippy is not just relying on me. We help each other. Very well, then. Did you think getting help from others was a bad thing before? All I can say is, from what I've witnessed, only the tunes that paved their own path are the ones who achieved the greatest of successes. Regardless of what each of us believe in, let us wait for those three to reemerge from the headquarters. Yeah, I suppose so. It took only a minute or two for Giggles and company to come out of the HQ. What could they have been looking at? Well, uh, we didn't really find anything, Stranger Crew. I thought I heard something, but it was probably just the floor. It was mighty squeaky. Someone better do some upkeeping on it. So then you found nothing? Unless a squeaky floor counts as something. Nope, quite a bummer. Let's just keep going. Righto. Excuse me, Giggles, were you simply going to brush past buildings that we haven't opened yet? What do you mean, brushing? Giggles realized he passed by three buildings. You're right, I'll check him. For someone who just berated Flippy for being utterly useless, you sure don't pay attention to things, do you? Hmm, none of you buffoons are suitable leaders. Not a single one of you. You... I'll make sure to check every single one of these buildings. I see. While Giggles was checking the buildings nearby, someone approached us. I'm here. How much did I miss? Well, uh, not much, I guess. Are you sure? You're right, Tom? It was just Giggles being rude again. Where is he now? Just a bit ahead, checking all the doors. All right, then. Oh, Pete, did you see Surly or Lou? Huh? Did Surly go somewhere? Yeah, he told me he wanted to check if TTC was going to stay open. Sorry. Oh, jeez. He wanted me to check if TTC was going to stay open. Well, I don't think I saw him at all. As for Lou... Ah, present. We looked back and where he came from. He's covered in glue again! He's covered in blue glue! So you want to know why my shop is called... So you know how my shop is called Blue Glue Direct to You? I don't think I need to explain what happened when I tried to gather everything I could. So I figured that I might as well wash myself off at the dock since I have to go there anyways. So why blue glue anyways? There isn't really a reason, unless it being my favorite color counts as one. Blue's your favorite color? Yeah, pretty common favorite color, but it is what it is. Well, if we keep going, I'm supposed to be leaving, leading. Good. I need to get this glue out before it dries too much. No doors open, except for the HQ, which didn't even have anything. Nothing is gonna help us. Maybe not here, dear, but perhaps somewhere else? Uh... Look, guys, we're almost at the dock's playground. Woohoo! Now we're talking. Lead the way, Bessie old pal. Sure thing. Well, here's Donald's dock. We all went through the tunnel, and once we made it through... I'm home. 
Ah, there's that nice ocean smell. Right, nice. Well, time to smell like it. Wait for me! Uh, Bessie, Lou only dipped his head. Did she just dive right in? What do you think? You have eyes, no? Yes, Mo, I do. They're right under my eyebrows, if you didn't know. Um, well, are we gonna split into teams again? I assume there's nothing left on Barnacle Boulevard, yes? Hmm, I don't think so, but there's also Surly who's just kind of missing. So maybe we should go get him. Well, since we're doing just that, we could do it by ourselves. Sure, Operation Go Get Surly commence. We'll be back with Surly eventually. You all can explore the other streets. And there goes those two. Oh boy, time to pick the teams again. So who's going where? Well, Ricky, obviously Flippy should pick the teams this time. It's only fair since I basically did it last time. Oh, how funny. What? Firstly, I don't remember you making all the teams last time. In fact, I was the one to suggest forming teams. Really now, because from what I remember, Surly was the one that proposed the idea, not you. Secondly, why should I have to listen to Flippy? He was never officially elected as leader, and basically is as mayor. We want to keep Flippy as our leader, right guys? Oh really? You sure you're speaking for everyone? I support Flippy 100%. I won't believe a liar like Flippy. Really? Complaining that Flippy just wanted to keep morale up? What, are you just gonna say that because we'll all die eventually we shouldn't breathe oxygen? Yeah, doesn't make sense now, does it, Harry? Hmm, a change in leadership? Sure, who needs a stable government anyways? Seriously, Flippy's been trying his best, and just because he's flawed like everyone else, you think you need to just replace him? What, you wanna be the new Lakers leader, Giggles? Is that it? And if I do? Because I'd make a much better leader. No, you wouldn't! Guys, please. Really? How so? Do you really want me to list out every single thing wrong about- Will you all just shut it? And out of nowhere, Mo stunned everyone in the silence. You are all absolutely unbearable. To those who want Flippy to remain being the leader, go with him on the Seaweed Street. The rest of us go to Lighthouse Lane. There, how simple was that? Seems you've surprised us all, Mo. This desire to steer the group, I wonder where it came from. You be quiet. I will be going to Lighthouse Lane now. You buffoons know which street to go on depending on what you believe. To think just a few choice words from Coach Z would have motivated him to lead. Perhaps a helping hand to jumpstart one's sense of duty isn't so bad after all. I'm going with Mo. Hmm, I think I'll do the same. Hmm. Harry, Riggy, and Giggles all went through the Lighthouse Lane Tunnel. So I suppose the rest of us are going on Seaweed Street? I would say so, however, I ponder how would Mo attempt to lead a group comprised of those he disliked before? Especially if one of those tunes is the same one that threatened he'd die first. Why are we in Donald's docks? Okay, Flunky opened it, and now we can go there. Uh, but Toontown Central is gonna remain open, we think. We're not sure. Surly decided to stay behind. Just to check. So, Pete and Tom went with them. Uh, Giggles, uh, Riggy... Harry and Mo went to Lighthouse Lane because they don't want Flippy to lead. Everyone else is going with Flippy. Seriously? Is this a test of some sort to see who'd lead better? Huh, as if Mo would ever be a good leader. Don't make me laugh. Giggles, I'm not surprised, but Riggy, Harry, and Oldman too? I expected this from Harry, considering what he said to Flippy this morning. Regardless, where's Bessie? Uh, kinda just been in the water for a bit. I guess we're in teams of five again? Guess so. So I guess Mo of all tunes split us up. For Lighthouse Lane, it's Mo, Harry, Giggles, Riggy, and Oldman. As for Seaweed Street, it's me, Coach Z, Lou, Paula, and Bessie. I really hope Coach Z lives. I can't keep this group together. Coach Z is here to help me, but I suppose there's nothing else to do but venture in the Seaweed Street. Wait, is the... They didn't check the entrance to Chippendale's Acorn Acres. Is that blocked off too? Can they go to Boss Bot HQ? So, uh, we got the dock back. Woohoo! Wow, I'm so glad. Finally, we can do things like swimming. Yeah, see, basically you already got some cool ideas. So let's get over to our ex epic investigation. What, what, what is that? What's what? That tone. What, what in the world are you doing? Bessie, are you trying to act like Riggy? If so, then you'd better stop it. Riggy's the last tune you should try to be like. Besides, you two barely even spent time together. Why does the coward have an issue with Flippy? 
Harry doesn't believe Flippy because Flippy and Paula kept saying that they'd never, that no one would ever kill. Like they were sure that no one would be able to, no one would do it. And then, well, Clef did it. We did, and uh, I'm not acting at all, just keeping the mood up. Sure, uh, let's just start our investigation. Yep. This one's locked, and so's this one. I have a feeling that none of these doors will open, dear. Well, we'd better better to check them than to not. The last thing I want is for Giggles to complain about us not checking stuff again. I know it may seem not good at all, especially with all the arguing we've done, but we just gotta keep moving forward. I suppose we should. There should be a Toon Headquarters located in every street, unless did the Cogs did something to change that. They better not have! Those Cogs have messed with us enough. They better not have done something stupid to some of the HQs. I assume they wouldn't, though it's never an impossibility. Look, Stranger Crew! It's an HQ! Let's go in pronto! Bessie, is this your idea of cheering us up? Regardless, we went inside. No one in here. Well, look at that, bucko. Nothing is better than... Okay, Bessie, can you please drop the Riggy act? You're not fooling anyone. We literally just want you to investigate this area in peace. This comedy routine is not helping. Not one bit. Ah, <sighs> okay. It's not working out. Not one bit. Get it? Since it's a bit, like, a comedy bit. Just search the HQ, Bessie. <laughs> oh, man. Lou is gonna kill her. No matter where I searched, under the desk, looking through the glass panes, I couldn't find anything. I found nothing. Did anyone find anything? I did not, dear. Bessie, did you? Nah, but the floor is not as squeaky as here in the other HQ, so there's at least one good thing about this place. If the other team finds something in their HQ, I have a feeling I know what Giggles will say. I know this seems bad, Flippy, but I got nothing. Well, hey, better to admit you got nothing than to keep pretending to be Riggy. Why'd you even try to do that anyways? Riggy's a horrible role model. He doesn't care about any of his fellow tunes. What? He does care. He just doesn't show it much. You say that, but from the trial, all it seems he cares about is a fun game. Well, you have a point. But while we were making my costume for the pie throwing contest, he told me... Hmm, so then you loop it around that way and, uh... Yowza! There we go. Wait, you got it? Nice. On a day's work, just gotta get one more rubber band around these two sticks and your glasses will be done. You've been really cool helping me out with this, you know that? Though, you sure you're alright? You're still at 50 left. Ha! <laughs> As if some laugh drain would stop me. I think to myself, why let something bother me if I can just not let it? What do you mean by that? Simple. Sometimes I think to myself, whoa, that's a pretty bad thing. But then when that happens, all you gotta do is laugh it off. Just laugh it off, but what if it's something really bad? I know none of the Stranger crew would ever murder, but still, what if it does happen? Oh, Bessie, all you gotta do is just be like any other citizen. Joke around and have fun. After all, that's the Toon way. <laughs> nice one. Wait, that didn't seem like a joke. What part of that sounded like a joke? Good point. Look, Bessie, old pal, we were all brought here for some reason, so we're obviously all special. To lose any of you, will that just be super bad? I mean, aren't we all probably some of the most important tunes? So if we can't change our situation, why not just have fun with it? That's what a true tune would do. Besides, I'm usually the party host, not the party goer. This is a pretty once in a lifetime offer. Well, I don't know if you should treat this as another party. What, you're not gonna say tens of tunes die at every one of your parties, right? Well, there may have been a lot of trips to the hospital. Pretty sure I brought my own ambulance just for my parties. Yeesh, that crazy of parties? We're not gonna host something that dangerous, right? With only 15 tunes, ha, <laughs> not a chance. Fair, fair. Anyways, let's finish up this costume. Already ahead of you on that one, bucko. What, how? I got pretty used to making costumes. Besides, this one's a super beginner level outfit. Yeah, put these leftover bands on too. I. Right. Well, how do I look, snazzy or snoo super snazzy? Huh, <laughs> just like a real host. Who knows, Bessie? Maybe you'll be the one to make it out of this game. Don't say that. I'm sure we'll find another way out of this. Perhaps we will, Bessie. Perhaps we will. And besides, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> All right, Riggy. Although maybe try to make it more obvious when you're joking, okay? No promises. He said that. I don't know if he really meant it, but I'd like to believe it at least. So that explains why you imitated him then. 
trust me, it's not great when he acts like this, and it's definitely not when you do. Uh, right then, it's just that even if it was just for a little bit, I felt a bond with my two fellow hosts and Clef too. Even if Clef killed Kara... Sorry, totally messed up the emotional impact of that scene. He did not keep that act up when he was double-drained. No, he was straight up depresso when he was double-drained, I have to admit. Hello, Dark Mario Bros. We're in Donald's dock now. Um, we're all looking on the different streets, and Mo is starting an insurrection. Ugh. Got some water in me. Now, Coach Z. Even if Clef killed Clara and what? Even if Clef killed Clara and wanted to escape alone, he was perfectly willing to get everyone killed. That includes you, you know. I, I guess you're right. There's a time and a place for laughter, but right now, do you think that you should just laugh this off? No, if anything, that you'd be just wrong. We appreciated your efforts in cheering us up. However, unfortunately, laughter isn't always the best medicine. I can relate, Bessie. I tried my hardest to distract everyone from the killing game, but... Clef still killed Clara. That didn't change. And I'll never forgive him for doing that. Killing someone over an accident. Someone like that shouldn't have even made it to the first trial. I want to say something to that, but no one spoke up after that statement. Except for... We should hurry up and check the doors on this street. Even if it'll probably be blocked off, just like Silly Street. Yeah, you're right, Coach Z. Let's go, everyone. Heading back outside. The able-bodied gym. I'm way past due for another actual workout, but... Yeah, locked. Not surprised. Well, you tried. Congrats. We should just keep going, guys. No need to tell me twice. Oh, I'm pretty sure there's a pond back there. I believe so, Bessie. And don't tell me we're just gonna go fishing right now. I'm just gonna fish up glue again, and I'd rather not be covered in glue twice today. I doubt this good luck charm is even working, considering I got covered in my own blue glue today. Hmm. <laughs> As if Riggy was telling the truth. So we're just gonna get to the end of the street already. Yeah, let's get moving. If I'm not mistaken, the tunnel to Daisy Gardens is fast approaching us, yeah? Yeah, should just be around this corner, but something tells me it's gonna be locked away, just like on Silly Street. Well, only one way to find out, Coach. We turned to the corner with not much expectations, and we found... Yep, it was locked. A blocked tunnel, just like in Toontown Central. Oh, I should have seen this coming. It's one thing to be denied once, but twice? I swear, if there's any way to get to that flunky, he will pay! Maybe we could just find a way to break these doors open. There's gotta be some sort of button, right? Maybe it's just really hidden? Yeah, no, as if Flunky would just let us go to Daisy Gardens without another murder happening. Wait, do you think that Daisy Gardens would be unlocked next? It is where the invasion of Cogs was third easiest to deal with. That makes sense, but I bet Flunky would only open it up unless another case happened. I suppose our garden will have to wait, Coach Z. That's perfectly fine by me, after all. What's most important to us is preventing another murder from ever happening again. Because if we give Flunky what he wants, then it would just be bad as those cogs that killed us. They kidnapped us. Sorry, they're not dead yet. I'm sorry. They're not dead yet. They're not... <laughs> uh, you're right, Coach C. Everyone saw what happened to Clef, and we have a decent amount of areas to explore. We could have been trapped in some factory, having to look at bland walls every day, but this is just Toontown. Exactly, Flippy. Even if we never escape, we can find comfort in our familiar surroundings. The only downer is, what did the Toons think happened to us? We might not know that, but we can only hope that they're taking the situation well. Well, then, uh, I suppose we'd better get back to the playground. Maybe we'll get back there first. Yeah, let's do that. Wanna lead the way, Flippy? Ah, uh, wait, before we go, huh? What is it? Actually, it can wait. We should get back to the playground before the other team. Oh, okay then. Yep, time to go back, everyone. Let's get a good jog, God, a good jog going. Something that's about right, something about right, Riggy is that there was nothing in that scene that showed Riggy cared about others. He was just saying that it was a tune's duty to be silly. Oh, yeah. When we returned, a group of tunes were waiting for us. Oh, some of them are back. I assume the other five searched Lighthouse Lane. Yeah, looks like you two found Surly. It was actually pretty easy to find. He was about ready to go to the dock when we found him. 
is Riggy the true Nagito? It, what does Nagito mean? So, Surly, did you figure out anything? No, there were not any indicators of whether or not Toontown Central will truly stay open or not. I suppose I should have expected that. I assume we can't venture further beyond Toontown Central Donald's Dock. Yeah. Well, we can wait for the others near the HQ, since it's kind of cramped on these planks. Well, I'll go first. To the HQ we get... Ow! Tom, you okay? I'm fine, I just tripped on something, I think. Oh, phew. Wait, was it that plank you tripped on? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, I see. Everyone watch your step. Got it. Shouldn't we just push it down? I got this. Kochi stomped on the board until it fit into place. I'm not too sure if that'll keep it there forever. However, at least no one will trip on it in the near future. Well, it's as simple as not pulling it, so we'd probably be fine. I assume no one would do that, yes? Uh, wait. I think the other group is returning. Let's move towards the HQ, then. Oh boy, here we go. You notice that the HQ here was locked, just how, like how the TTC one was, but no one was bothered to mention anything. And the other five tunes saw where we are and gathered around. You can take a wild guess if we found anything or not. Here's a hint, it was nothing. It looks like it's just like before. Hmm, except this time no one found any blueprints or documents. Or is someone hiding it again? As if anyone would be after your annoying tantrum. We've done all the investigating we could, right? There's no point searching elsewhere. Actually, there is Chippendale's Acorn Acres. Because it is in direct way to Bossbot HQ, which I bet those stupid cogs are at. So we'd all better go. No exceptions. Why would we should just get ourselves killed? What? Do you think that Flucky would just let us walk in and trash the place? He'd probably just execute us on the spot. So what? You'd rather just not even try? Of course I'd rather not try. What? We all saw how Clef was executed. I, I don't want that happening to me. So if you want to go get yourself killed, leave me out of it. Harry spotted the party hat building just behind the HQ and ran into it. Nagito means being a crazy, unhinged sociopath who pretends he's normal, but he does everything in his can to make the game more interesting by testing his ideals. Basically, to ensure his belief, he makes every situation as crazy and cutting close as possible. Oh, I see. Yeah, that pretty much describes Riggy, actually. Hmm, as if Flunky would do that. Besides, what are the chances that the acres are even accessible? I bet it's blocked by one of those idiotic barriers. Now that you say that. Giggles went to the tunnel, and just as he tried to enter it, what the- Hmm, not surprised I was correct. Great, not only is there nothing to find in any of the streets, but I can't even get anywhere near Bossbot HQ. Oh, boo-hoo, cry me a river. Did you honestly expect anything useful? How pathetic. Oh, I'm pathetic? At least I'm trying to find things. If you're so adamant to get that stupid flunky's lair, then just dig underneath the tunnel. Oh, let me guess, you didn't even consider the thoughts. Hmm, this is why you're no leader, Giggles. And what, you are, Mo? Oh, please, leadership is something idiotic. What's the point of leading those who won't listen? That's quite the view you have there, Mo. Someone who demands that doesn't believe in leaders. You buffoons start digging. I'm tired of dealing with you all. It seems Harry and Mo have left to do their own things once again. The question now is, what will you all do now? Will you see if digging underneath the barrier will allow you to access the acres? I wonder. I don't know how to lift Harry's spirits. I can't even blame him. He was practically proving right with how Clef was planning to kill for over a day. A day. Look, Bessie. I know I grilled you about having some sort of connection to Clef. But what he did was unforgivable. But I guess I can't blame you for how you feel. Clef was quite the tune, wasn't he? Seriously? But we all know what happened with Clef already. No point in dwelling over it anymore. The past is in the past, after all. Riggy, is it really how you feel? What do you mean? Are you really fine with what happened? I, I tried to look only forward, but I was really bad at it. You're just, like, acting right now, right? Ha! Nothing I do is an act, Bessie O'Pal. Clef only wanted the host to kill Clara, and that's that. Gotta put it to him. What a plan. You... You just keep running your mouth like nothing's wrong? I swear, you're the worst type of tune. Quite rude to say that to someone right next to you. How about you back off before I knock you- Stop! Huh? Stop what? I don't know, just Riggy... Why, why are you saying these things? I thought... What? Am I wrong? 
Clef simply lost at the game, which is quite a bummer for him, but good for us. Yes, but you sound like you don't care at all. That's because he obviously doesn't! But... Riggy, were you just lying when you said that losing any of us would be super bad? Hmm. Well, of course lying is pretty bad. Excuse me, of course dying is pretty bad. You can't live after that. Besides, wouldn't you say that the mystery we had to solve was pretty interesting? Interesting! Is that how you all felt about that case? We we lost Clara, someone who didn't deserve to die. I really hope this is just an act, Riggy. Well, I don't want to dig, so I'm going to head out. Oh, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. So, uh, we should start digging then? We don't have another choice. I have a sneaking suspicion that this barrier could span below the surface. However, per perhaps I'm wrong. Better to try and fail than to not try at all. Indeed. Yeah, no. I'm not gonna do this. Riggy's acting very sus. Yes, R everybody is like totally sure that Riggy is going to... Riggy's gonna do it. He's gonna cause the next murder. I'm calling it right now. Do you think he'll do it? Or do you think he'll be the one that makes someone try? Oh, jeez, I didn't even see that. Hello, Grand Soloist. Welcome. <sighs> With Lou leaving, it was only seven of us left. Giggles, Tom, Surly, Paula, Pete, and I tried to dig for quite a while, but it was no use. Surly predicted right. No matter how far we dug, we couldn't get past. Whatever invisible barriers were set in stone. Eventually... Well, I suppose there was an attempt. Indeed. Does anyone have an idea how long we've been doing this? Couldn't have been for much more than an hour. Giving up, we noticed someone was watching us. Wait, were you just standing there this whole time? Not the whole time. However, I have been here for the past ten minutes or so. And you didn't bother to help? Even Flippy of all tunes helped out. Gee, thanks. Like Surly stated, I believe that no matter how far you dug, you would not achieve results. However, I wondered, how much time would you all be willing to spend on a task that deals no rewards? On your journey throughout Lighthouse Lane, Moe showed nearly zero interest in actually exploring for himself. Whether out of laziness, selfishness, or any other reason, who knows? Seeing now how this group of tunes is willing to dig for quite some time, perhaps I was wrong to temporarily follow Mo. Hmm, not believing we could do anything and yet he still watched us? Hmm. There goes Surly. I can't grasp what he's trying to teach us. Regardless, perhaps Harry would be willing to talk now. Riggy kills Z. No! Don't say that! I don't want Coach Z to die! And with Paula leaving, it was just us three, standing next to a hole to nowhere. Well, uh, maybe we could play a game using this hole. We dug for quite a while. Let's fill it in first. Oops. Yeah. I could definitely use a random game right now. I think Riggy will convince Harry he should kill someone to survive. Why do you think Riggy would say that? By the time we got the hole filled up, we were so tired that we all ended up laying on the ground. Oh, I'm pooped. Uh, Tom, your ears, uh, uh, something wrong with my ear? No, no, it's just I haven't ever laid on down on the ground like this. Uh, okay, I thought something was in it or something. No, no, you're perfectly fine, Tom. Oh, Flippy, how have you been feeling? Well, to be honest, not good at all. I feel as though in that investigation, the trial, and especially now, you've become more cheerful than me. I have? Well, you've been able to keep your spirits consistent, <laughs> because we've been kind of falling apart. Well, during the investigation, Pete told me something personal. Oh, I, uh, told that to Tom, too. Ah, I see. I know saying sorry for you having to see a dead body before it doesn't make sense, but yeah. You think we'll ever know about our pasts? Honestly, I don't know if I even want to know. Fair, but I'd rather know why Giggles hates me so much. I guess so, but if I knew more about how I lost someone I knew, I'd probably be feeling a lot worse right now. Maybe I'd want to face whatever happened later, but definitely not right now in a killing game. Yeah, I guess we should focus on what's happening right now. Well, hey, at least we're still here. Though I guess I shouldn't jinx it. Yeah, maybe we should get up now. This terrain isn't really that comfortable. Got it. Riggy will get blamed for someone else dying. I actually think that one's possible. I think Riggy will not do it, but he'll, somebody will blame him for it. Ha! 
All right, so here's what I'm thinking, right? Here's what I'm thinking now. The next time, the next three people who I expect to kill, I was wrong the first time. I didn't suspect Clef at all. I think the next three people who were most likely to kill are Giggles, Harry, and Coach Z. Who I think is most likely to die? Riggy, Mo, and Giggles. Us three got back up. I think we should just check the gag shop just to see what's inside. Well, we don't have much to do. Sure, what Flippy said. Flunky wouldn't put anything bad inside, right? I doubt it. Yeah, you're right. We all stepped inside. So it looks like there's a bunch of money here too. I don't get why there's random money in both this gag shop and the one in Toontown Central. I got no guesses on why that is. Either of you have any? Well, I assume you all found the gag shop. Were you able to figure out why there's a bunch of cog bucks in this store? Nope. Well, that's unfortunate. I've been going around asking everyone with no success. Gotta say, there's a lot more of us here than I'd expect. Tell me about it. I always thought it was only me and Tom for a bit. I'll find out how this all happened, Clara. For everyone's sake. Hey, Flippy, you okay there? Ah, yeah, sorry. Just can't think of anything. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't appear that there's much to discover here. I can't get behind these walls of money. Should we try lifting someone over to see if something's behind there? I can lift Pete. Ah, you don't have to do that. Oh my gosh, he's they're gay for each other. Pete's totally gay. I'm the tallest. We can just move the couch over to the wall of money. Oh yeah, that could work too. Tom and I moved the couch over for Pete, and he was just barely able to look over the shelves. But after a quick look around, he shook his head, and we put the couch back to where it used to be. Ah, oh, man. Guess there wasn't anything special about this gag shop, then? Doesn't seem like it. Well, at least we now know there's nothing hidden behind... Attention all tunes, come to Toontown Central's Plaza for an announcement. Oh. Oh, no. It's not the motive already, right? I don't think so? I say that, but my heart was already racing. No matter what the announcement is for, we don't have a choice. We have to go, now. Got it. I think Riggy- I just think Riggy's trying to look optimistic, but the way he's acting looks like he's giving zero importance to what's happening. Maybe he just don't care at all for his survival. That's also a possibility. Riggy's thing- Riggy could be just doing an- Excuse me. Riggy could just be having it all be an act. I could totally believe that he 100% is just pretending. We'll need to, we'll find out. Us three went through Barnacle Boulevard and Punch Lane Pace at a brisk walk, reaching the plaza in only a few minutes. We were the first ones there, but it didn't take long for the others to arrive. And with everyone present, a monitor once again descended. For having to go from your huts all the way to here, I must say I'm pleasantly surprised it didn't take you that long. Just shut it, you cog. Tell us why we have to be here. Oh, such confidence. I wonder where that will go. After all, this is the motive announcement. But it's only been a day since the previous trial. Why would you do this already? Quite simple. This motive works best by being activated for as much time as possible. Speaking of which, I'll announce it now. We instinctively brace for whatever Flunky had to say. The motive is as follows. What if you could murder someone without risk of an execution? That's... What do you mean by this, Flunky? Oh, obviously you can't just kill anyone and get off scot-free. This will be the second trial, no? So what better way to celebrate than to split you tunes into pairs? These pairs will be either a tune you trust, someone you hate, or perhaps even someone you barely know. I made sure there'd be a variety of the types of pairs, and not necessarily an even amount of each of them. Great, a partner system. How does this even work? The first portion of this pairing rule is simple. If you kill your partner, even if you are found out, you won't be executed, only harmed. Secondly, if you kill someone else, as long as your partner knows you are the killer, your partner won't get executed with the other innocents if you two can keep suspicion off the one that killed. Finally, if you and your partner kill another pair, one tune each, then not only would the others have to figure out both killers to avoid execution, they need to figure out who killed who. And even if the innocents found out who killed who, both culprits would get to live on. Heh. <laughs> Will you cooperate with your partner, or off them? The choice is yours. So, in other words, you're opening the opportunity for two tunes to work together on a murder? 
<laughs> Wasn't there a rule that stated only one tune could leave? We'll get there when we inevitably get there. Yowza, maybe it'll be a one-on-one -on -one duel. Don't you dare be getting any ideas. What about the 13th tune? There is an odd number, Flunky. Wait, yeah, unless there'll be a group of three? I already have a clause for them. Simply put, one of you won't get a partner. If you get killed, then your killer will have a chance at surviving their execution if they're caught. Also, you'll know who your partner is tomorrow. You'll be allowed to share who your partner is with others. However, do you really think that'd be a smart decision? That is for all, for now at least. <laughs> These rules, man. Pairs. This motive incentivizes a pair working together to kill another pair. How... how do we deal with this? Something horrible is going to happen and... Could I even stop it? So this is Flunky's plan. With the scaring... with the scarring nature of seeing someone be executed in such a brutal way, his next motive provides a clauses that allow one to avoid such a fate? I see. And to top it off, it encourages two tunes to work together. Old man walked away, saying nothing more. Well, but even if someone could not get executed, the only way to not get killed or harmed would be if a pair kills another pair. And like, wouldn't that be difficult to do? That is true, and any other clause states that any killer would at least be seriously harmed, no? So, we're gonna be okay then. That's only if they get caught, no? The main rules of the game still stand. If someone were to get away with murder, then they win, no? And considering how most of you idiots stumbled through that trial, with an accomplice being an option now, Another murder is almost certain, no? No one is thinking about working together to harm someone, right? Hmm, I wonder. Wait, how will we know who our partner is? Perhaps through a dream again? Flunky stated that we'll know by tomorrow, yes? Then I'm going home. So, what about everyone else? Old Man and Harry are already gone. I believe our best plan of action is to simply go back to our huts too. The only way we'll find out who our partner is is by calling it a day. You're right, Pete. Hmm. Sending us off with no actual plan? And you call yourself the ultimate mayor. Whatever. I'm tired today anyways. The rest of us simply walked back to the huts. But before I left... Flippy, could you stay behind for a second? Huh? What is it? Surly seemed to be hesitating. I have but one question for you. What year is it? Huh? The year? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's 2013. 2013! Wait a minute! Don't tell- Wait a minute! It's 2013! <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute! It's 2013! That's the year that Gyro Gyrulus used the rewritten machine to turn himself into Dr. Surly in the Toontown rewritten timeline. Is the RE machine the rewritten machine? D oh my gosh! Is this the end of Toontown? <laughs> uh, Surly? Uh, yes, I suppose so. Perhaps I lost track of the time, that must be it. Do you, do you think it was another year? No. Simply put, I did not know what year it was. The combination of spending so much time experimenting and the memory loss we were given. Maybe the year was important to those around you? Memories of others were muddled about as much as possible. Perhaps you're right, Flippy. Very well, thank you for the answer. We should head back now, if you say so, Surly. Surly and I made it back to the huts, and I entered mine. I feel like Surly wouldn't ask that question for no reason, but I can't think why he would. I stared at my wall for a while. I don't even know why. I don't even know if I want to go to sleep or not, because if we really don't know who our partner is by tomorrow, what if they try to make us hate them? Or maybe we'll know some other way? Maybe a note included in the daily meal? I don't know. I don't have any way to tell. Uh, who's there? I wonder if he's still awake. Oh, it's Pete. Hello, Flippy. What brings you here? Well, not much. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. With the motive starting tomorrow, we have to be prepared in any way we can. You're right, Pete, but what could we do? Well, perhaps putting in place some sort of self-imposed rules could work? The problem with that is how many would actually follow them. Maybe the threat of a motive would motivate others to follow them? But wouldn't putting a bunch of rules seem overly bossy? I doubt a lot of them would even want to listen to what I have to say. Really? Not just giggles? A lot of tunes have completely stopped trusting me. Pete, you didn't see the most of it since you were absent a decent chunk of the investigation. Ah, uh, right, I suppose I was. Though, if they wouldn't listen to you, then... I'll do it. You want to try managing everyone? Well, I didn't exactly want to do it, but... If it helps someone, 
secure those we care about, I'll do it. Any way we could stop a case from happening, we have to do all we can. Someone we care about. I have a feeling I know who Pete is talking about, at least in his eyes. Then I'll stand beside you, Pete. He's totally gay for Tom. He's totally gay for Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Flippy. Well, I suppose I should let you rest now. I just hope that whoever our partner is, we're not made to hate them or something. Pete left my hut, and with nothing else to do, I fell asleep. Hmm. Looks like Flippy was drained. Well, 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 the motive has now officially started. I didn't have some sort of dream? Wait, don't tell me, am I the... Wait, I feel like there's something on my right shoulder? Hold on, is it taped to me? What could be taped onto my shoulder? It took a bit of effort to rip it off with my left hand. Oh, that hurt a bit, but I got it off. What's on this piece of something? Well, this is my partner. So I got Coach Z. Oh, phew, that's someone I trust. But I shouldn't let anyone else see this. I put the sticker? I think it's some sort of sticker back on my shoulder. The gay couple gonna bite it. Oh, no! No! <laughs> I can't really tell what this thing is made of, but it doesn't seem easy to tear. Question now is, when could I meet up with Coach Z about this? Well, re regarding that, I don't know how many tunes will be going to TTC for a morning meeting, though I might as well go. Ugh. Seems I was the first to arrive, though, less than a minute after I got here. Oh, hey, Flippy. I guess we're the first two here. The last time we were one of the first ones here. We were actually the first ones, and following us... Oh, no, Flippy's down now? Little did we know, Clara was already gone by then. Ah, I just wish you could have done something about that. Guess there isn't much to talk about, is there? Oh, sorry, Bessie, just thinking to myself. Let me guess, the motive and stuff? Yeah. Well, hmm. Maybe there's something we could do to lift everyone's spirits? But the last time that happened, things went horribly wrong. Oh, the pie event. Although, I don't have my drop buttons anymore, so maybe there's no way to lose laugh? You don't have your gags anymore? No, I think they were taken sometime during the night. It was by Flunky, right? Not anyone else. Yeah, so there's where you two are! Ah, hi, Riggy. Well, someone is elated to see me. What about you, Flippy? Uh, hi, Riggy. Well, that's no way to start off the day, especially since the motive finally started. Uh, it sure did. Wait, Riggy, what do you mean, so there's where you two were? Is everyone someplace else? Yep, most stopped everyone from going to TTC, since apparently meeting up next to the Docks HQ makes more sense and stuff. And I gotta say, we gotta agree with that, bucko, so let's go back. Well, I guess we know where everyone else is. And, uh, about potentially doing something. Maybe once we split up, you could gather a few tunes to go swimming? Oh, that's what you want to do? Yeah, I think it'd be a lot of fun. Sure, let's just make it only a few of us. Got it. Anyways, we should probably go back. Indeed. I don't know about other people, but I feel like if I was in a game like this, I would just start telling everyone everything. I feel like I'd lay it all out, you know? I feel like I'd just be like, Yeah, so I got a motive that Celeste killed both of my parents in the middle of the night, and I was left, you know, destitute and homeless as a result. I would have just told people that. I don't think it would have been something I would have kept hidden. Or if, like, who my partner was, I think I would have told people. Because telling them kind of... It, I don't know. I feel like telling people makes it less likely for anyone to kill you. Because if you're all being honest with each other, then you, you know, you know each other better and you feel less likely to kill each other, right? Maybe? I, I assume so. I guess I don't actually know. It doesn't work. All resistance is futile. Because in the one cycle, we'll use that info against you. What, is there an ultimate psycho? It's Celeste, isn't it? I should kill her. I, I need to kill her first. Bessie and I caught up to Riggy, and once we got to where everyone else was... You, you can't just do this. Really? And what amazing ideas do you have? I just wanted to implement a randomized duo system, make sure no one would try anything. Really? And if one of those randomized duos just happens to be an actual duo? If you want actual results, you'll do things the correct way. My way. But what you want is for everyone to have the same schedule every day. Oh, what did I just walk into? What's this talk about a schedule? Oh, look who it is, the late mayor of Toontown. Let me guess, you're also going to complain about what is literally the perfect plan? How would controlling every part of our lives be perfect? 
It's just the type of tune Mo is. What, the type of tune that's actually willing to state the cold, hard truth? Go ahead, do whatever you please then. Just know that without rigorous control, all you'll find is a dead body within a few days. That's exactly correct, and you don't want to admit it. Well, you all heard him. Now, considering how this motive works, I have to agree with his plan. But we can't just start a regime this strict. And, got any better ideas, or do you want to see a dead body show up? Of course I don't, but this isn't the best way to go. No good plans again, Flippy? I... I swear, those two were just so annoying. If we could figure something else, I just know we can. Yeah, we just gotta think. Question is, is there really an alternative? Hmm. Well, I'm sure that we can figure out a good al... There's... there's no good alternative. You can all say whatever you want, but you all know what'll happen if we don't do something drastic. Is that what you truly believe? Yes, I'm... I'm not gonna be fooled again. I see, so that's your belief then. Well, old man, aren't you gonna say something like, you gotta stop thinking about the killing game. Harry's totally bringing down the mood. I don't believe any words could persuade Harry otherwise at the moment. Only he can change his ways. <sighs> Never impossible to change a tune. All you gotta do is smile on. Even if that may come easy to you, Riggy, please give Harry his space. Everything we've had to go through thus far was, well, taxing to say the least. Yep, especially, well, the trial. But, uh, hey, Harry, I was a suspect, too. But don't take it personally. They were just trying to find the culprit. And, well, figuring out that someone I wanted to know better did that. Yeah, that was pretty bad. No, like, super bad. Even if he only did something so evil because of a motive, he wanted to get away with it. I know I'm not really good at deep conversations, but after what Coach Z said to me, how Clef was willing to kill all of us, I didn't know what to say because he was right. Clef only wanted revenge, no matter the cost. I know my attempts at raising morale have just been backfiring, but I, I don't know what else to do. And yet, even after everything has happened, I still want to believe in all you guys. I'm sure there's a way that we can all trust each other, right? No matter what the motive says, can we really believe Flunky would let someone go? Indeed, so please, Harry, you have to trust us. I know this situation is terrifying for you because we all feel that way. Some of us have been pushing others away or trying to take control because we're scared. So don't think you have to go through this game alone, Harry. Stop it. Huh? You really think we could trust each other? Especially now that there's multiple ways to avoid execution? Th th that mindset of yours, it's just gonna get you killed next? The desire to take control and being a total coward. How peculiar, and yet such an overlap that makes complete sense. Old man continued to mutter to himself as he walked away. I have to make sure he's safe. Well, this turned out the opposite of great. Well, it uh didn't go horribly. I suppose so. I can tell you for sure that it's not your fault, Bessie. Maybe we do need some sort of control, but we only feel comfortable taking such measures if we actually trust each other. I couldn't have said it better myself, Coach Z. If the biggest obstacle is a lack of trust in each other, the fishing we did before helped a bit, right? So perhaps something simple like that. Maybe when there's less tunes, Flippy. Ah, did somebody disappear? Huh? What do you mean? We looked around to realize Surly had left as well. Ah, so Surly was the one who did a magic trick then. Well, I'd better ask him how he did it. I, uh, don't think it was a trick. He probably just walked away at some point. Well, good thing he's gone. I guess I can't blame you for thinking that way. You don't need me to repeat about how I feel about Riggy. I feel like he's gonna do something stupid, seriously stupid. You don't say. Maybe I should talk to him. But the big problem is I don't know if talking to him would do anything. Well, maybe I could help talk with him, though I'm not too sure what I'd say. I mean, go ahead if you want to, but I doubt you'll get anywhere. And, uh, there's something I want to discuss with Flippy. But it can wait, so you can go interrogate him or something. I mean... We can talk about Riggy later. Honestly, we could just try later, since I doubt he'd change much. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So what do you want to tell Flippy? Nothing much. You all can, I don't know, have fun or something while you wait. Ah, uh, I know. Perhaps you can plan a swimming event for us. Swimming, huh? Alright, I'm listening. I'll make this quick, Flippy. Alright. If everyone just talked, this game would be easy. <laughs> That's true! Lou led me to the huts. So what do you want to talk to me for? I'm not going to kill you, if that's what you're wondering. Uh, thanks. Look, I'll get to the point. You want to know what happened in my motive dream of Mo? Are you willing to tell? Only a part of it. That Mo, that Mo, 
he ordered glue from my store to fix an instrument of his, even though glue is obviously not to be used for that kind of stuff. And because it broke, since obviously gluing an instrument back together is a horrible idea, he blamed me for it. He tried his best to ruin my business all over something that was entirely his fault. And that's putting it vaguely. Oh gosh. Oh gosh indeed. But why tell me this? I have a question to ask you. What is it? Do you trust me? Is he trying to say... What do you mean by that, Lou? It's pretty simple. I want to teach that Mo a lesson, to show that he can't just control us with these stupid rules of his. Like seriously, control every minute of our lives? Yeah, no, I'm out. So, I want to make it seem like he's such a bad toon that no one would ever listen to him ever again. Okay, that's not as extreme as I thought for a second, but what would you want from me? It's pretty simple. You just keep doing what you do and let me make a fool out of Mo. Oh, I hate Mo. I hate Mo a lot. Do I let Lou make a fool out of Mo? This is actually a really tough one. Chat, I want you to help me. I want to see votes. All those who agree say yes. All those who agree say no. All those, sorry, all those who don't agree say no. Lou is going to get himself killed? That's not a no! Do you tr yes, so we've got two yeses, two noes. Celeste, you gotta be the tiebreaker. Hold on. I have a coin in here somewhere. Somebody call it. Heads or tails? Heads. Okay, Soloist says heads and Soloist says yes. So if it lands on heads, we go with yes. That's heads, that's yes. He gets to try to make fun of Mo. Just be careful, okay? Whatever you plan to do, make sure it's nothing that can endanger you, alright. I won't flippy, just trust me on this one. Good. If that was only the beginning of what Mo did to you. Then he had no right treating everyone like this. Just don't do anything stupid, okay, Lou? Do you know who you're talking to? Anyways, this chat has gone longer than I thought it would be, so we should just run back. Yeah. But as we were heading back... Ah, you two are still here. Yeah, and? Bassie told me we needed something buoyant just in case someone isn't good at swimming. That's someone being Pete. Trying to find a large branch or something? Pretty much. Wanna help me, Flippy? I mean, you do what you want. I'm heading back. Alright, look. I'm glad we were paired up. However, would it be a good strategy to stick together? What do you mean? It makes perfect sense for us to stick together, considering what we've done so far. However, what are the chances a malicious pair takes advantage of that? You mean, a pair that want to kill another pair? Obviously no two tunes could do such a horrible thing, but we have to be cautious here, Flippy. So, what say you? For the sake of our safety, it makes sense to stay apart. However, would us staying apart seem suspicious? You made your decision yet. Better know now than later. I feel like the smart thing to do... Ah! <laughs> Uh, I trust Coach Z. I'm sticking with him. <laughs> to stick together. Got it. Let's make sure to protect each other, alright? We'll make sure of it. I trust you wholeheartedly, Coach Z. Same to you, Flippy. So let's find Pete something to hold on to, right, Leader? Yeah, sure thing, Co-Leader. Well, let's get to it, Flippy. Oh, you know what the sad thing is? Everybody I get close to is going to die. First it was Clara, now it's going to be Coach Z, and I'm going to have to go through the entire list until the only person I'm left with is Mo. <laughs> we made it back to where Bessie and the others were. 
Hey, they're back. Did you find something for Pete? It's not much, however. We can make it work. Just need help from Tom as well. Oh, okay. Um, are you just gonna be holding my arms or something? I appreciate the gesture, but I don't want to be a hassle. Why not just use the loose board right over there? Pretty sure that'd float a lot better. Oh yeah, you're right. Maybe, but do you want to damage that ramp even more than it already is? Oh, hmm. Eh. Oh, why not a good alternative to swimming? The boat. The boat? Yeah, you know. That boat over there. It's been going around and around. Doesn't look like anyone's in it, though. Maybe it's automatic? Oh, snap! So, like, a robot? Blech. We really want to be on something that's like the flunky? Oh, please. I bet that boat looks anything like that stupid flunky. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like, like the boat I remember. Just not with a driver. Well, it seems relatively safe. The railings seem adequate. Don't worry, Pete. We'll just be careful. Well, if everyone else is fine with it. Guess I got nothing better to do. The boat sounds fine, Bessie. Alrighty then. Time for a coastal cruise. And so we boarded the boat once it stopped at one of the piers. And once it departed... Wait, it's actual Toontown music? Oh, okay. Would you rather Riggy or Mo? I'd rather... I'd rather be stuck with Riggy than Mo. Riggy's kind of an agent of chaos, but I don't think he'll kill anyone. I'll be back. Can't wait for someone to be dead. <laughs> Ooh, Pete. Looks like a bunch of starfish in the water. Oh, that's quite a lot more than I remember there being. Well, it's not swimming. Getting to see the dock from here is neat, though. A bit disorienting, but yeah, I can get used to this. Well, thank you for the honesty. So, uh, why are you so excited for this, Tom? Why wouldn't I be? I've only done this, like, two times before. Really? I don't remember any payment required for this. Well, I've just always been so busy with work, so getting to do something like this is a super rarity. Well, I'm glad you find this so much fun, Tom. It's nice seeing Bessie this happy again. It felt like it's been a while that she was able to be, well, not burdened with everything that's going on. Not just the killing game as a whole, but Riggy and Clef were honestly in a more similar situation than I expected to be in. I have Coach Z to help me, so I guess I'm doing better than her. But losing Clara, why did that have to happen? So, how long are we going to do this? As long as you'd like. I can stay here all day. All day? I mean, if you'd like, I can stay here as well. Sure. Yeah, no, I'm going to get off at, like, at most ten minutes. But you'll miss the tour. Tour? You know, like, there's the pet shop, which I'm pretty sure is closed, but it's a nice shade of red. Or the trolley, which maybe we could go on now. Huh, you're right. Maybe if laugh isn't a problem anymore, we'd be allowed on. Trolley games would be good for training. And lots of fun, too. Look at Tom and Pete. They're so they're so good for each other. Bessie gave a seaside tour of the entire playground, though not before Lou exited the boat at the next pier. Sharing so many fun facts, even I didn't know all of them. When it's something she's passionate about, Bessie truly shines, doesn't she? Bessie got to be her own person. Isn't that nice? Eventually, the tour ended and the rest of us got off the boat. Took you long enough. You gotta stay on the boat, you know. Fair enough. Well, uh, I had fun. I'm pretty sure Pete did too. You, uh, didn't need to be always patting my back. Oh, whoops, was that not comfortable? Uh, no, it was fine. I meant this, and uh, I didn't want your arms to feel all sore from lifting them up, so, oh my gosh. Just kiss. Uh, the no worries, Pete. I might not look too strong, but I've gotten pretty good arm training. Really? Well, nothing formal, just kind of naturally waved my arms a lot explaining things to Tune. Well, hey, getting exercise from doing your daily activities is pretty efficient. Though, if you want to get more serious, I could offer to you some classes. Hmm, maybe. I'll think about it. That's a bit tempting. <laughs> I'll probably stick to just pacing back and forth on accident. As in, just something I naturally do, whether reading something or teaching something to others. Hmm, maybe we could pace around and wave our arms like crazy. Huh, perhaps we could, Tom. Perhaps we could. Well, I'm glad that a good amount of you started, like, listening to my tour. I just kind of wish it had to be in these pretty scary times. We'll get back at that flunky, no matter what. Whatever you say, coach. My question is, what have the others been doing? Everyone keeps going off to do their own thing. It could have to do with the motive. It's possible that pairs are meeting up with one another. Oh, right, the partner thing. So we either trust, hate, or don't know. That's practically saying anything goes, with maybe some few exceptions. Yep, you can say that again. Hmm, we just gotta trust each... Oh, great. What is it now? Attention all tunes, I have a very short announcement. 
Simply put, somewhere in the dock, you'll find a very special item. To whoever a pair obtains it, they'll have a much easier time knocking out another pair. You'll know what the item is if it has an interesting label. That's all. Happy findings! An item? That doesn't sound super good. More ways to entice a pair. Suddenly we heard footsteps from the party hat building. So, Flunky continues to provide extra motives for us, no? Hmm, so be it. I'm gonna find whatever he did and destroy it. Oh, hello you all. Hello, Paula. Not only hello, Paula, but hello to this rather sizable group. Hmm, look who it is. Are you just never gonna let what could be a lie go? Oh, I'm sorry for being cautious around a potential dictator. Are you being serious? Flippy's the dictator and not the guy who literally told us to follow his every single word? Okay, and did Flippy come up with any ideas? Flippy doesn't need to do anything. We're here to help him. Yeah, and we've been busy having a nice boat tour. Boat tour? Oh, uh, no. You all been just spending your time riding a boat, then trying to come up with a different plan? And you were the biggest complainers about Moe's plan, too. Some dedication. Hm. Have you made any changes to Moe's? What Coach said. No, because it's the smartest plan. Oh, really? You see no problems with Moe having all the power? You can't seriously have forgotten how he's been treating us, Giggles. I see no problem with it. No problem? It's one thing to be stern, but it's another just to be a plain jerk. And I could definitely say Mo follows under the jerk category. Maybe he was right that the randomized duos was a bad idea. We could just modify it to be bigger groups. And how about we get everyone here so we can discuss this, no? Yeah, let's do that. I gather as many as I can again. I don't think Riggy would kill unless he ends just like Nagito. What if Paul is by- It's a gun! <laughs> it's a gun! Yes, it's a funny gun. Hmm, where's Surly? We could only find Riggy and Mo. Surly and Harry were somewhere. Well, what was so important? Did you buffoons finally have an actual rebuttal? Look, Mo, we know how important it is to keep everyone safe. I know that. He's okay with Mo legit treating them like dirt, but not Flippy trying to be fair. Yeah, I guess he's not consistent, huh? But we can compromise. A compromise, really? If we instead separated into groups of four or so, if any incidents did happen, it'd be obvious who'd be responsible, no? I would have said I'm surprised you actually thought of an improvement from your original plan, or you literally could not have gone anywhere but up. Well, Professor, if you're so sure about this plan of yours, then who'd be on what team? There's only 13 of us. I know, I want to be at the funny tunes that haven't shown up. Harry and Surly? Why exactly? Well, those two keep evaporating. I want to know their tricks for a future party back home. Um, I'll join you, Ricky. Hmm. Well, there's one group, Pete. Care to actually pick one for yourself? Just because he came up with the idea doesn't mean he has to choose everything. Newsflash, Mo. But not everyone wants to control every single thing of another tune's life, you know. Well, uh, maybe the boat tunes can stick together. Sounds good to me. Wasn't there six of you, though? Eh, you can count me out. I've had enough fun boat time. I wasn't planning on doing that for a while. And with that, the silly street crew can stick together. And Bessie joining us is a nice bonus. We can use the extra positivity. I'll try. Okay, then, so who does that leave? Mo, Lou, Giggles, and Oldman, yes? What a great group. Oh, boo-hoo. Angry that Pete and his gang did what you asked, hmm? Fine. You win this time. Well, team, I see no reason to try to venture any further to find this extra motive from Flunky, so I'm staying right here. To the other buffoons, I don't care what you do. Just investigate anywhere but here. Well, I know where I'm gonna go. To the huts! Oh, didn't Flunky state that the item is located in the dock? Although, I would like to find the others first. Well, what are we waiting for, then? Let's go, bucko! Well, you heard, Mo, didn't you? You all search the streets. Wouldn't it be fair to split the responsibilities of who searches what? I mean that for both of our groups. It doesn't matter where we search, just we need to cover the entire playground. As for us, we kind of have a problem. There's three streets, but only five of us. Well, maybe only one of us needs to check the first street went on. What's it called again? Barnacle Boulevard. Flippy, would you want to go with someone? Well, I guess it makes sense to... Oh, Coach, actually, I kind of want to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Huh? Uh, about what? I don't know. I just feel like I need to sort things out about the whole host crew thing. Hmm. Well, I suppose I could talk about it in Lighthouse Lane, then. Yeah, that'd work. There goes Coach Z and Bessie. So how do we split up? Well, maybe a... We just had some fun searching for Surly with Pete, so Flippy, you're up! Uh, Pete would really go with Tom. It's fine, Tom. I can search by myself. You sure? Yeah, you two can keep each other company again. 
Works for me. Now we get to see Seaweed Street, Pete. Flippy, you didn't have to. Of course I had to, Pete. You're totally gay for him. Come on, I wasn't super sure about things, but seeing how much fun you're having on the boat with Tom, I'm sure you'd much rather be with Tom than, well, alone. Thank you, Flippy. No problem, Pete. Well, I guess I'm alone on this one. Pete's so gay. I didn't expect him to turn out to be this gay, but he's so gay. <laughs> I searched in Barnacle Boulevard, well, really nothing happened. I searched every single corner, even tried to fish for something. I guess it was fun to fish again, though I'd much rather prefer to find something. However, it wasn't what I was expecting. Oh, well, isn't that... Well, look who's here by himself. Did the team already dissolve? Yikes! so! No, we just split up to search for this item of monkey place for us. Riggy filled me in on the situation. With unnecessary enthusiasm. Oh, please, Surly. A motive like this is super interesting. I bet we're gonna see two dead bodies show up soon! <laughs> Ricky Merle, what is wrong with you? He's been following me for far too long, Flippy. I see. Well, is there a reason you two searched here? With the main playground being searched by Toons already, it made sense to search other places. Paula went to Seaweed Street and Hera didn't want to search with us. That shorty needs to learn to relax, you know. Do you think it's possible Harry was chosen as one without a partner? Well, maybe. I don't think he'd want to investigate regardless of whether he was partnered with anyone or not. Indeed, figuring out who's been partnered with who is going to take some time. What, you're planning something? Of course not. Now more than ever, I just need to stay safe. And that includes not being constantly followed by someone, Ricky. Hmm. Well, you don't gotta be so rude about it, Surly. Nip this problem in the bud before he commits a terrorist act. <laughs> Wait, are those two partners? That would explain where Biggie's been trying to find Surly, but I, I can't be too sure about it. Well, regardless of anything, I I'm spent. I don't want to go through the entire street again. I made my way back to the huts, and just as I sat near the campfire, and I sat by the said fire alone. Why? Now that I'm not investigating, all I can think of is that. Everyone's trying their best, but I know I can do better. All I've done is just keep getting worse and worse. Why am I not the confident mayor I know I am? I know I've never had to deal with something so perilous, but I've barely been any sort of leader as of late. Mo and Pete have been trying to be more of a leader than I have, neither of them really wanting to do it. So why shouldn't I be allowed to just sit here and do nothing? Tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll step up again. But how would I do that? We have a plan in place now. One that I'm literally breaking right now, being by myself. I need to find my group again. I can't be here alone. As I was about to head out, I noticed two tunes approaching me. Ah, there you are, Flippy. Ah, uh, sorry. I bet it was making you all worried, right? You bet. We thought something might have happened to you. I know. I, I know. Where's Tom and Pete? They're still searching on Seaweed Street, I think. But, Flippy, why were you here? I just... I don't know. I, I couldn't find anything, and lately I just can't figure out how to lead anymore. I haven't actually done any much for the group since the trial. No, even in the trial, I was struggling. Whoa, 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 Flippy. I didn't mean to shout at you, but you already know you don't have to always be the front runner of anything, right? I know that, Coach. I just can't help but feel bad about not getting all of us out of here. I even knew about Clef's bond and didn't even think that it would have driven in the murder. I, you know you can't blame yourself for that, Flippy. Yeah, Flippy, I guess I haven't been super great at keeping things together, too, so... But it's my job to protect everyone, and I've already failed. Hey, look, Flippy. I might not be the mayor, so I guess I don't really know how it feels, but I don't blame you for anything. No, seriously, everything that happened wasn't because of you. Exactly. Flippy, you yourself told me that I shouldn't blame myself for not sticking around to catch Clef in the act. Well, you need to stop blaming yourself for what happened at the pie event, alright? Yeah, yeah, that's basically what I can't get over still. Coach, I, I damaged Clara so badly. Clef dealt the final blow, but I dealt the majority of the damage. We got along, but what if she died hating me for putting her in such a perilous situation? Flippy. It's true you'll never know what she was feeling. However, your only option is to trust in the last moments you spent with her. Because, well, we don't have an alternative way to know. You're right. Thanks, Coach Z, for always helping me. It's a coach's duty to help those in need. I don't want to break up this conversation, but we should probably find Pete and Tom now. Does anyone know who Harry's paired with? Surly thinks Harry might be paired with nobody. 
No, you're right, Bessie. We should find them now. True. Let's head out then. Once we return to the dock... We just noticed there wasn't just Tom and Pete, but almost everyone there. Well, 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 look who returned. I wonder why you simply walked towards the huts by yourself. Hmm. <laughs> Not even following the rules of your dear friend. It's laughable, really. Oh, please. He has Coach and Bessie with him anyways. So, that everyone? Almost everyone. I don't think I need to say anything more. Harry continues to avoid us at all costs. Honestly, it was a bit surprising how long he stayed with us yesterday. Well, that's besides the point. Did anyone find what Flunky hid? Coach and I couldn't find anything. Sally and I didn't. Flippy didn't look very happy either, so I'm gonna guess a no from him. I found Pete and Tom happy in Seaweed Street, though not a malicious happy. I... Uh, let's see. The playground search was a bust. We searched through any buildings accessible to us, however, to no avail. However, there was one issue with our tactics. What do you mean? How likely is it for a duo or a singular tune to have found the item and isn't speaking up about it? Well, I mean, not very high. Paula was with Pete and I, and Surly and Ricky didn't seem to find anything along with Flippy. And Coach and Bessie got to talk to one another during our street searches. So I can definitely say they're not strangers to one another, though I don't think they were exactly friends. I might have gotten a bit heated when I was talking about, she was talking about Ricky, but I was only annoyed at her antics, nothing more. I see. Going by the rules of the motive, how your partner has to be someone that you either trust, dearly despise, or barely know. That means you two could not be partners. However, what about us that stayed at the playground? We were all practically working alone. Hmm. If something was found, it would have been quite obvious how someone would react, no? Exactly, which means none of us found it. Great. Oh boy, let me guess. We're going to try searching again tomorrow, aren't we? Yeah, but for now, we should get some rest. We've done enough today. Ah, we're going to be working again tomorrow? Boring! We have to do this for everyone's safety. All right, all right. I'll just have to compensate then. Compensate how? Attention all tunes, it is now 10 p.m. For all of you with a partner, I wonder what you'll do. Nighttime already. It seems so. Hmm, so it is. Well, I want to keep searching just a bit more, so you three better follow me. Excuse me? I'm exhausted enough. Don't make me agree with Mo of all tunes giggles. I just want to quickly check Punchline Place in case that Flunky is trying to check trick us or something. And what, what reason would Flunky have to lie? I'll never trust that dreaded cog. Him being the reason we're all here. If I ever get to see him in person, he'll regret it. He doesn't believe Flunky, yet is still searching for something anyways. Great. I'm not gonna let him waste my time. That may be your opinion, so however I'm intrigued to see if he'll find anything of use. I believe you two should follow them. You are a group, after all. Uh, fine, but I'm not staying for long. And there goes that group of tunes. Well, I guess we should just go to sleep then. I'm beat. I assume same groups tomorrow? Actually, Tom, is it okay? Would you care to join our team for tomorrow? It's basically a team of three without Harry, and you can rejoin the groups if I can get Harry outside. Well, okay. Though after we search tomorrow, I'm a return to sender. Wow, a temporary party member! Don't call him that. That just sounds disrespectful. Fine, fine. Let's get going then. And there goes that group, leaving... Hmm. <laughs> Didn't even ask before taking Tom, but whatever. Well, at least Tom will return us tomorrow afternoon. Though, uh, it would have been nicer to stay with him. Well, time to get to sleep, partners. Partner. Wait, I, I meant group, uh... Wait a minute. If Coach is my partner, then Bessie's partner is Pete? No, it's okay, Bessie. I'm fine with telling them. So, then. You mean you only you two were paired up? Yeah, that's right. Looks like us two were paired in the barely new category. Yippers, I was kind of surprised you were my partner of all tunes. Though, maybe it's for the better that my partner isn't someone I had a stronger connection with. I see. Well, I feel as though the two should, us two should share as well. After all, I'm pretty sure we can trust you two. Indeed, I don't see why not. Alright, to answer who I was paired up with is quite simple. Flippy and I were actually paired up. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, thank you for trusting us with that. I just wonder who Tom got paired up with? Is it maybe Paula? Maybe? That would make sense why she wanted to join her team. Well, regardless of anything, we should probably just get to sleep. We're gonna be searching for a while tomorrow, so make sure to get some good sleep. Indeed. Gotta say, thanks for using accents for the reading. Helps since a lot of spots I can only listen to audio. Are the voices good? Do you guys like them? I tried to make everyone have a unique voice. 
with my vocal range, which isn't very big, mind you. And so we all headed to our respective hut. Is Tom the lone two tune? No, Tom's with um, Tom's with Riggy, not Riggy. Tom's with Paula's group. So that's Paula, um, who was in that group? Because it was Lou, Surly, Riggy, and Mo, and that leaves us with. Oh, I mean in the pair thing. Maybe Tom's the lone tune? I don't know. The item is still out there, right? With heavy eyes, it didn't take long for me to fall asleep. Attention all tunes, it is now 8 a.m. There isn't anything important to announce. Carry on this day as usual. Oh, better meet up with everyone to decide what each of us searches today. But who's alive and who's dead? The only people who are dead is Clef and Clara. That's it. At least so far. Someone might have been dead this morning. Has it been two days yet? This is the second day. Well, better meet up with everyone to decide what each of us searches today. The first tune I saw was... Huh. Oh, good morning, Flippy. Pete, you're quite near my door. Were you about to tell me something? Well, uh, it's kind of awkward, but I want to ask advice for certain things, but lately I've been wondering. Surely hypothetical, but is it worth trying to pursue something with someone if we can get out of here? <gasps> He's totally gay for Tom! He's totally gay for Tom! Oh my gosh! Cats and dogs living together. Mass hysteria! Pursue something? Do you mean like, what are you two doing up so quickly? Oh, I'm just wondering about things. <laughs> How specific. We can talk about this later, please. Indeed. Congratulations, now get moving. Fine. We headed over to the dock, where everyone once again met up. Well, everyone except Harry. So, who's gonna go where today? Not Toontown Central, that's for sure. We didn't search for that long. It felt like a millennium. Perhaps we should reshuffle our teams, no? Huh? Why so? Wouldn't that be the smartest option? We always seem to be splitting up the teams for that were supposed to always stick together. But how about we mix and match teams? That does hold some ground. If possible, I can try to get Harry from the huts. I wouldn't want a partner I wouldn't need a partner for that. Would that work? What? Of course you need a partner, Bucko! Well, hey, how about I go with you? He clearly doesn't want to go with you, so back off. Would Surly even need a partner for that? He's not going to be in the dock himself. Alrighty then. Actually, I know just what to do. See you tunes later. Wait, wait, Riggy. Uh, you guys. Hmm. And with Surly's plan to get Harry, we're down to nine. How grand, Pete. Hey, don't be mean to Pete. We just, uh, let me think. Two there, two there, and two there. Oh, I got it. Two tunes per street and four, two for the playground. You forgot someone, Tom. Oh, right. Forgot myself. Make it three for the playground. All right. Then who will go where? Uh, it's all right if you go with Paula in this one, Tom. Oh, okay. Then how about Lighthouse Lane, Paula? That works for me. I haven't seen it yet. So, uh, who's next? I'm not dealing with Giggles Toontown Central searching. I'm going to Seaweed Street. I wasn't planning on searching there today's anyway. Only the street to Toontown Central. I shall accompany Giggles, then. Perhaps you'll find what you seek. Huh, fine. With old men and Giggles leaving... Well, and you four? Yeah, no, I'm staying right here. I, uh, need to ask Flippy something. Fine, I'll go with Mo. You better actually search, you got that? Ugh, this is gonna be a long day. It's only gonna feel that way if you keep up that attitude. Just get moving, coach. better actually help. Well, I doubt we have any reason to actually search. The funny haha -ha giggle squad literally searched everywhere and none of us found anything. Maybe, but you never know if you miss something. Fair, fair. I guess it's time to do another circling around. Indeed, let's at least do some searching before discussing any potential finds. And thus, us three searched the playground. I searched everywhere outside I could, including some of the ocean. After what was probably a few hours, Pete approached me. Well, I haven't found anything yet, have you? 
No dice, Pete. No dice. Well, at least we're trying. I was having a feeling we won't find anything. However, that's not what I came to tell you. Ah, oh, well, I mean, yes, I was going to tell you I didn't find anything, but you know what I mean. About wanting to pursue someone after the killing game? Yeah, on one hand, I'm absolutely terrified. We probably have so many cases to go through before this game ends. But if we all can just find a way to break Flunky's game or find a secret escape, I would be so happy to survive with... Pete, are you talking about Tom? Yep, I was right on the money. I guess I wasn't exactly being subtle, was it? But my point still stands. I'm absolutely terrified now. I know the odds of everything being okay are slim. Horrifically slim, even. Maybe... Maybe I only thought I could lose literally anyone and be okay because I couldn't remember anyone from my past. Because I, I don't know what I'd do if Tom... Pete, I... No, I know how low the chances are of both making us alive. You don't need to sugarcoat it. I see. However, I'll do what I can to protect not just you and Tom, but everyone. I promised myself before we went to our huts that I'd step up this morning, but I didn't. If anything, you're becoming this group's leader more than me, even if you don't realize it. I am? Your drive to protect what you hold dear expands to everyone, Pete. Coach Z and Bessie have been helping, and yet I haven't stepped back up yet. So maybe things might look bad, but the only thing we can do is just our best, isn't it? You're right, Flippy. But you don't have to always strive for perfection, okay? After all, mistakes are just part of the learning process. Huh. <laughs> I suppose it is, Pete. And you're right. I know you're right, but I just can't stop thinking about what, need, what I need to be the best mayor there is. I, unfortunately, can't relate to that kind of pressure, but perhaps what we need right now is to just distract ourselves by searching. Indeed. Yo, he's definitely in love with him. I've been saying that since the beginning of the, like, today. When he was hanging out with Tom, they were so gay. <laughs> well, Tom might not be. Tom might not see it that way. That would suck, actually. If, like, Pete confesses his feelings and Tom is like, Sorry, it's nothing personal. I just don't date cats. I kept on searching, checking up with Pete and Lou here and there. However, none of us found anything. Eventually, everyone returned. But even after so many hours of searching, no one had found anything. Someone's definitely got it. Like War said, someone has found the thing and is hiding it. Well, while all you were wasting your time, Riggy wanted to make a trampoline, but he couldn't find the materials for one. So, we made a picnic. You two are hosting once more? Oh, no, no, it's just a simple picnic. I spent a lot of time convincing Riggy that there wasn't anything he could use at trampling, so it's all we could do. But, uh, we don't actually have any food, so... Yeah. So in other words, you have nothing. Hmm. <laughs> oh, you're just plain useless. Why'd I even bother? I'd rather rest alone at this point. Ha! Huh, you didn't even search. You only tried to get hairy. Actually, did you even try for that long? I admit that I didn't try for much time, however, I can say he's alive. That's good, at least. Well, anyways, who's coming? I mean, it'd be nice to just unwind after a search. You know what? I'll go too. Same here. I would want to see what you set up with after searching the street back and forth five times. Then let's both join them. Eh, I don't want to deal with Riggy. Mo is enough. Uh, maybe I can check it out just for a bit. Got nothing better to do. So, any others? No one else said anything. Alrighty then, let's go, buckos! And thus, the seven of us headed to Toontown Central. And at the playground, we found... Well, what you think? It's actually quite nice. Didn't expect the props from the speedway. Yeah, I agree 100%. Oh, nice. Others did like it. Hm. And you doubted the Supreme Party plan, a Bessie old pal. Well, I mean, I just don't know how to think about you anymore, Riggy. And that's the problem. Thinking. Well, uh, putting that aside... Just how has everyone been? After two days of searching, we still don't know where Flunky hid, whatever he hid. Wait, wait, wait. I haven't even unveiled the surprise. Surprise? While you weren't looking, Bessie. Ta-da! Oranges! Oh, where'd you find oranges of all things, Riggy? From my daily meals. Wait, really? I don't remember ever getting oranges. Do we all get different meals each day? I never ever really asked what others were eating, since I usually get fish-related dishes. Which, saying it out loud, just kind of confirmed that. I don't think everyone is a fan of fish. I've only gotten fish twice, so it seems like we've been given different meals each day. Are we just gonna stare at these, or... Of course not! Today we feast! A feast of four oranges. Well, let's split these four as evenly as we can. 
Riggy split the oranges among the group, with Tom getting a full one. Hmm, even though I've gotten oranges too, they're still so good. I'm surprised you actually had food for us. Though, uh, could I eat this later? Not really in the orange mood now. Not a fan of oranges? Okay, not really, but fruit is fruit. I'm not gonna turn down free food. Fair enough. Also, Tom, careful not to choke on any pulp. But you're going through that whole orange a bit too fast. Ah, oh, mm, mm, mm. Maybe we haven't been able to find what Flunky's trying to bait us with, but maybe that's for the best. Just like Pete, I'm incredibly worried about what might happen. However, at times like these, we just have to enjoy the parts we can. Bet Tom is going to be like, sorry buddy, but I just see us as good friends. Unless he feels the same way. Maybe good friends, maybe he'll be friend-zoned. We enjoyed our time together, even if Riggy's enthusiasm was a bit much. And eventually... After most of us left, it was just Pete, Tom, and me again. Mm-hmm. Oranges are the best! So, what should we do now? Well, Tom, there's something I wanted to ask you. A question? Well, actually, it's not just a question, but a promise. Simply put, let's keep watch of each other's backs, alright? Well, of course! I got your back and you've got mine! I suppose I should have figured you'd thought that already, but to say it officially, it's nice. And that goes for you too, Flippy. I got your back too. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I got your back, and I got your back too, Flippy. Tom, like, maybe just read the room. <laughs> I guess we could try to search in just a bit more places. Though, maybe we could just stay here? Ooh, ooh, I know. We can walk and flap our arms like crazy. <laughs> right here? Yeah, come on, Pete. All right, all right. I felt it was just been best to give Pete a nod in his direction and leave them be. Falling in love in Danganronpa is dangerous. I feel hungry after searching and only getting half an orange. Maybe the gag shop has something? Hmm, a bunch of money, as always. I didn't find any food in these boxes while searching. And we know there's nothing behind there because of Pete. I guess I shouldn't have expected anything. Oh, what? Huh? Oh, hey, hey, Flippy. Did you come here for food? Something tells me you didn't eat your orange. Okay, can you blame me? I wasn't just gonna throw it away in front of them. So, was there anything in here? No, it doesn't look like. Well, that's a bummer. Actually, there's something about the Make Moa Fool plan that I want to talk about. Though, kind of has to do with his house and stuff, so better to explain it there. Do I want to keep checking for food? Hmm. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go then. Follow my lead, Flippy. It's gonna be fun. Lou's finally happy! Lou and I made our way to the huts, and once we got there... Alright, so here's the thing. Tomorrow we're gonna try and make Mo set up some sort of event for us. It'll be right here, at the campsite. Or right, what better way to embarrass someone with a bucket filled with starfish? Starfish? What are you gonna do exactly? Okay, I'll admit that I don't have the most concrete idea. I honestly want to just see Mo open his door and get splashed by starfish in front of everyone. I mean, I don't think it's going to make any kind of statement, Lou. That just sounds like a prank. Eh, yeah, you're right. I guess with Pete taking over, hmm. I still want to make him look bad, but ugh, I guess we should just sleep on it for now. I could use a nap as dinner. Yeah, that'd probably be for the best. Lou and I entered our huts. At this point, I don't know what time of day it is, but I could use a nap. Probably gonna wake up super early, but I don't mind. Tomorrow's gonna be another day of searching, but maybe I should convince the others that we should give up on the search. I don't know. I trust. Does a prank count as a gag? No, no, a gag is specifically a weapon. Wait a minute. Am I hearing something? What time is it? Let me check the drawer, just in case someone's there. Got up and went to the door. Hello? Mm. How? How are you communicating with me? The radar system of this machine. Really? You're actually using it to do this? Yes, this, that is a fact. Am I supposed to just trust you without knowing who you are? 
I guess I have to prove I'm on your side. Yes, of course I'd like some proof you're not on the cog's side. Is it me warning you to stay safe enough? You implemented some sort of chip in my ear and you expect me to trust you? I never did that. You didn't? Then how are you able to intercept any sort of signal that I'd be emitting? I couldn't do it alone, but I got someone to help me. Are they with you right now? As a matter of fact, yes. However, I don't think you're gonna believe this. Pass the radar to them. All right. I was the one that helped him out, Surly. I see. Out of all the possibilities, the one that helped you figure this out... ...was me. Is it Gyro Gearloose? Someone tried to contact Surly. Attention all tunes, it is now 8 a.m. I have nothing to announce at this moment. Carry on this day as usual. Wait, this isn't his house. Hmm. Surly awoke as usual, getting up from his bed. Why did Funky state this moment? Making his way outside. There's a corpse somewhere around here. Guys, just wait! The first two to exit their huts were... Ah. Hello, you two. Did either you notice Flunky's wording of his announcement? You noticed it too, old man? Indeed I did. Could it be that Flunky is going to provide another motive today? He'd better not. We have enough to deal with. Let's first gather at the dock before we prepare for what's most likely that. I agree with this sentiment. Don't tell me Flippy's dead. No, we're at Surly's perspective right now. Surly, Oldman, and Coatsy went through the tunnel to Donald's dock, but what was waiting for them was a horrifying sight. <gasps> Flippy's dead? And Tom? Not Tom Pete? And Lou? And, and Tom? Four tunes on the ground, with one thing for certain. Tom was dead. I warned you, Pete. Tom is the only one dead. <laughs> no! <laughs> it seems like these three tunes have witnessed something horrendous at the Donald's Dock Playground. What? What happened here? Four tunes? I see. Something as grandiose as this occurring. It is almost impressive how terrifying this is. The killer or killers would be quite the challenge to take down, especially with only nine of us left. Wait, some of them might be alive. Certainly do something. I'll check for vitals. There's a silly with the check for vitals. One of the tunes that was laying down started to move. That tune being... Lou. Lou, you're alive. Jeez, what a way to wake up. Why am I cold? Lou was noticeably wet, as if you were soaked some time ago. Do you have any idea how you got here? What, what do you mean? Look beside you, Lou. That's... But Lou would be interrupted by another tune making noise. Oh no, Pete! Ugh. Flippy! Ow. Oh. Flippy staggered up, but he immediately saw the scene before him. That's. Tom! Pete! What? What? Why are they? Are they both? That's not for certain yet. I need to check Pete's pulse. Surly brushed aside Flippy and the others, and as he kneeled down to check Pete's pulse, a lot of tunes had arrived at the scene. He's alive. Huh? The heck did Flunky mean by Tom? Oh Lord, what happened to him? It's so icky. Just what happened here? All of you, stand back. I'm helping Pete up. 
nuke would ball huddle around the brutal site. Ugh. Pete's awake! Pete, careful now. What, what happened? Whoa, 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 easy there, Pete. What are you all standing around? It happened again. Another murder occurred. Who... who died? You shouldn't look, Pete. It's Tom, isn't it? The tunes near Tom's body slowly moved away, letting Pete get a full view of what happened. I failed you, Pete. I'm... I'm a failure. I could have stopped this. I can't do anything right. Flippy, no. Don't... don't say... No! I promised you two! You two put your trust in me, I, I should have kept my mouth shut. Flippy... You weren't the only one who broke their promise. Everyone fell silent. No one wished to speak up. The exception being... We can't just sit around. Do you think Tom would have wanted this? Do you think Tom would have wanted us to just sit here and do nothing? No, I wouldn't believe that. Not one bit. We need to solve this, not just for Tom, but for Flippy, Lou, and Pete. Indeed, Coach Z. The question now is, who could have managed to perform such an act? They attacked us four tunes. They attacked four tunes. The one or perhaps ones behind this. We have to expose them, no matter what. Wait, four tunes? So wait, is that why Flippy and Lou are wet too? Indeed, we found all four on the ground next to Tom. Heh. <laughs> So you're telling me someone or two managed to attack four tunes? Four? Don't say that so impressed. Are you kidding me, bucko? Knowing somebody managed to attack not one, not two, but four tunes? That's crazy to think someone could be so dedicated. You better stop talking right this instant, Riggy. Putting Riggy aside, aren't we still missing some tunes? Oh, you're right. Harry and Moe aren't here yet. Of course they aren't. Not like this happened last time, too. Then I'll go get them. I'll go with you, Giggles. And with Giggles and Paula going to get the two missing tunes, only eight were left at the seat of the crime. Surly took a deep breath and looked forward. Here we go. Man, Tom was hiding a lot of Pepto Bismol in his head. That looks like blood to me. Also, that's not how you spell Pepto Bismol. Well, it seems only five of us are in good condition to investigate. Oh boy, let's get to it, Buckos. I'll stick with Flippy, Pete, and Lou. You four can fill me in on what you find. What? You don't want to investigate with us? Take a hint, Riggy. Could you just get something to dry us, coach? Sure, I can do that. Well, wait, where can I get something to dry you? The bank sheets from the bank could work. Got it. Starting to leave, coach realized something immediately. What the? There's a plank missing! I almost tripped! Wait a minute. Missing plank, could it be? Well, I'll go first. To the HQ, we get. Ow! Tom, you okay? I'm fine, just tripped on something, I think. Oh, okay, phew. Wait, what was was it that plank that you tripped on? Yeah, looks like it. The same plank Tom tripped on was the one that he was killed with? But it seems that's the case. Coach pushed it down, but now. This is important information. However, I need to check the body. I don't want to take a low toast look at Tom. Sorry, Surly. That's perfectly fine, Bessie. Then you stay by Flippy and the others while I'm gone. Got it. Surly then made his way back to the body. Are you two willing to check the body with me? I am willing, yes. Sure, this is one is way worse than last time. You just stand aside, Riggy. What? Why, bucko? Aren't we pals? I don't care that we were partnered up, Riggy. If you aren't going to take this seriously, then please just stand over there. Oh, you two were partnered up? Indeed we were. Actually, now that I think about it, there was never a rule against showing definite proof of who your partner was, yes? Nope, here you go! Riggy pulled up his sleeve, revealing a card with Dr. Surly written on it. There, my proof! Clear as day! I may as well do the same. Surly did the same as Riggy, showing his card with Riggy Marole written on it. I see, so you two were partnered up. Very well, it's only afraid to show the same to you two. You might be surprised. Oldman rolled up his sleeve, revealing a card that had good old Gil Giggles on it. Your partner was Giggles, I must say. Did not see that one coming. Well, I tried to go with him whenever it seemed natural to do so. For the sake of our safety, I did not want to make it very apparent. I see. That's understandable. It appears both of us were grouped together with those we did not know very well. 
That does seem to be the case. Very well, let's take a closer look at the body. Yep! Alright, first things first. The plank in Tom's forehead. There's no doubt that this was the same one as the missing plank, yeah? Taking a glance at the missing plank that Coach nearly tripped on, I'd say yes. Hmm, I wonder how someone ripped the plank just like that. Must have been someone super buff. Are you trying to imply potential culprits? Who knows? I sure hope it ain't my best pal, Coach Z. Or maybe a good old partner is a good old killer, old man. Actually, one wouldn't need to be too strong to break that board. Oh, why not? Simply put, the plank was already loose. It most likely wouldn't have been too difficult to pull out. I see. That is news to me. Me too! When'd you find this out, hmm, Surly? Right before you two. Giggles, Mo, and Harry came back from Lighthouse Lane during our initial investigation of the dock. I see. Then it seems our group of five was completely oblivious to this information. Surly pondered to himself about this news, then continued in search of the body. Well, just like the three others, Tom's body is noticeably wet. The blood seems relatively fresh, though the water poses a problem in estimating how much so. It seems this murder might have been quite recent, which isn't a good thought. Dang, crazy to think he was alive not too long ago, Den. Brushing Ricky's comment aside, Surly checked the eyes of Tom, just as he declared clear his days prior. No sign of poison. I'm not surprised, but I have to be sure. Fair enough, this is your line of expertise after all. It also seems like he wasn't killed anywhere else. The blood stain on both the ground and his gloves suggests that. Do not forget to check who his partner was. It would be vital to know, yes? Ah, oh, you're right. Thank you for reminding me. Surly check Tom's white shoulder. Hmm, nothing here. Perhaps it's on his other shoulder. He doesn't have one? Oh, was he our soul tune? Not necessarily. The killer could have taken it from him, after all. It's very much possible his own partner did this to him. Taking the bait of not having any worry of execution. I can see a cowardly assailant doing so. Just as how Clef was baited in the murder, this killer could have thought it was reasonable to use this motive as an excuse. How pathetic, wanting to take an even easier way out than Clef. I still managed to capture four tunes, bucko! That's way more tunes than involved last time! I won't deny that this culprit clearly put more work into this case than the previous one. However, with the likelihood that they did so with a safeguard of a motive showcases their weaknesses. Surly silently judges investigation partners, one far more than the other. Mm, even though I brought it up, the culprit being the one to take Tom's shoulder card isn't 100% possibility. After all, we don't know if the adhesive that these cards have is waterproof or not. Well then, why not test it right now? Don't push me in! Fine, fine, I'll just dip my arm in. Ricky went over to the lake and dipped his entire arm into the water. And well, I suppose I should be grateful that Ricky's helping. I just failed to comprehend his attitude. His ideals of treating the situation as a joke is intriguing, I shall admit. However, I see it more as him not wanting to face the brutality of the situation in his eyes. To each their own, I suppose. Ricky returned, his arm all wet. She salt water is just not for me. However, I cannot confirm that water doesn't impact this card at all. In fact, I think it's completely waterproof. I see. That will be important to remember. The question is now where to investigate next. I suppose I should ask everyone who their partner was. I highly doubt the motive wasn't a major factor in this case. Indeed. I suggest we start with the tunes most directly involved. The investigation team found Bessie, Flippy Lou, and Pete sitting at the party hat building. Ah, hey, hey there, how's it been? Fine thus far, I suppose. Ugh, when is Coach gonna be back? The wind is not helping. I'm sure he'll be back soon. Ugh, you're right about the cold, though. I know you three just went through something horrendous, however, is there anything you remember that might be relevant to this case? I can only remember being taken. <sighs> so someone dragged them all into the water. Not alone. Also, they put three people out there. They should have taken all of their cards. So we have three pairs confirmed of six. Yes, Giggles and Old Man. Surly and Riggy. Uh, Tom and Pete and Bessie and Flippy and Coach Z. That's four pairs. So we don't know we don't know Paula, Mo, Lou, uh, Harry, and Tom. There was a knock on my door. It must have been very loud since I could hear it at my bed. I see. The soundproof system isn't as strong for our doors, yes? I think so. I don't remember anything else. The same thing happened to me. With zero differences in your circumstances? 
I don't want to think about it, but there's something you need to know. <laughs> I can't believe we actually just swung our arms like that. <laughs> yeah, but I had a lot of fun, Tom. Ah, it'd be fun to do silly stuff like this more often. The boat ride, the orange picnic, and now this? It really puts my mind off the killing game. Indeed, I have zero idea what'll happen, especially with this motive. Do you think someone knows who's paired with who? I don't think anyone knows much about the pairings, but we'll get through this, Tom. Yeah, yeah, we will. I just kind of don't know what to do about the motive myself. It's a weird feeling. Hmm? As in, well, I think we should discuss the scary motive with others, you know. Perhaps Toons would be willing to share who they're partnered with? Ah, oh, you don't have to tell me who you're partnered with right now if you don't want to. I'll bring it up tomorrow, and I'll be sure to be the first to arrive. Got it. See you tomorrow, Tom. See you tomorrow, Pete. That was the last time I saw him alive. I see. Very well, then. That testimony may very well be vital to this case. I appreciate the courage of bringing up what would be a bittersweet memory. I'll help in any way I can, just... I hate to cut the conversation, but I'm tired of being wet. I'm getting up. Lou hastily tried to get up, however... Ow, ow, ow! You okay, then? Yeah, my arms just hurt a lot. My arms have been pretty feeling feeling pretty sore, too, especially the joints. I'm the same. Oh, what might that be? Well, whatever reason, I'm sure we'll totally find it. We only have one more question for you all. Who were your motive partners? I was partnered with Coach Z. Someone I assume you trusted? Very well, show me your shoulder just to be sure. Got it. Flurry obliged, rolling up his shoulders. However, wait, is it just me or is it not there? Neither of his shoulders had a partner card on it. Yours was taken as well? Wait a second, do I not have mine either? Oh no, were all of ours taken? Lou and Pete checked their soldiers as well, finding nothing. I see, I'm beginning to see this culprit's plan. Ooh, got a case theory? Perhaps the culprit wanted to kidnap as many tunes as possible as to steal their partner cards from them. But why us? Why Tom? That I don't know yet. However, even without your partner cards, still tell us who you were partnered up with. I was partnered with Bessie, and I can prove it. Bessie pulled up her sleeve, revealing her partner card. Pete's not lying, I can tell you that. Well, I already said I was partnered with Coach. I can vouch for Flippy. Us four all shared who we got, though I guess we didn't actually share the cards themselves. I see. How about you, Lou? Lou? Oh boy, this is going to make me a serious suspect, isn't it? Oh, whatever do you mean? Do I really have to spell it out to you? My motive partner was Tom. I'm pleasantly surprised you were up front with that, Lou. Well, I'm not just going to hide it. I want whoever did this to me to get some serious payback. And I'll make sure of it. Yes! Fight for the truth, Lou! Don't let this incident get you down! If only I had the courage like you, Lou. Though, I know the only thing I can do now. I have to fight. I have to take down whoever could be this cruel. That sounded dumb, didn't it? No, it absolutely wasn't, Flippy. You can't blame yourself for this. You weren't the one that did this to us. Please don't hold yourself responsible. Alright? Alright. Even if I'm still in pain, I want to investigate with you guys. Are you sure about that? Yes, please. That determination to investigate with us, Pete. It is highly admirable. I just wish I had the same resolve to get up, but I can't. I need to be dry first. Fourth pair kind of confirmed. So wait, who does that leave us with? That leaves us with Paula, Harry, and Mo, who we don't know. Paula, Harry, and Mo are the only ones that we don't have any knowledge of. And if I had to take a guess... I'm going to say that Mo didn't have a partner. Explains why Lou was hanging out with them on the boat, despite clearly not caring. You know, that does make sense. It didn't take long for Coach D to return with plenty of bank sheets to dry the wet tunes. And while it wasn't fully adequate, it was better than nothing. It wasn't a perfect fix, however. Thank you, Coach Z. Your thanks is appreciated, Pete. You sure you'll be okay to investigate, Pete? Yes, I'm sure. All right, I think I'll stick here, to be honest. You four can continue investigating. Understood. Well, buckos, where to next? Giggles and Paula have not returned yet. Perhaps we should check the campsite itself. Might as well. The party hat is right here, after all. I bet Harry got paired with Mo, and Paula got no one. It's possible. While Pete joining the investigation crew, the four tunes headed towards the party hat tunnel. 
immediately they found a group of toons exiting a hut. Nothing in Pete's either. They all look completely fine. Hmm. Well, at least we confirmed that. You two have just been wasting my precious time. Were you three checking out each of the huts? Indeed we were. However, we didn't find anything noteworthy. I see zero reason to stick with you two. You have been far too uncooperative in this investigation, Mo. You know how much we all have to do this. So why are you trying to avoid everyone like Harry is? Huh, wouldn't you like to know? Seeing the new tunes, Mo figured this was an opportunity to leave. Huh, what a lazy tune. So, there wasn't anything in any of our rooms? Ah, Pete dear, are you okay? I'm not, but I have to investigate. Well, to answer your question, yes, nothing looked to be out of the ordinary. I see. So there wasn't anything left behind then. I have a fear that this case was orchestrated by multiple tunes as horrible as the thought is. Same here. There's no way just one tune could pull all this off. I'm just glad that you three are still alive. All this chit-chat is fun and stuff, but we want to know who your partners were. Ah, I see. Well, my partner was Oldman. Giggle showed his partner card to everyone. Honestly, I was quite surprised when I got you of all tunes, old man. Perhaps so. However, such a combination has kept us safe. Well, I wasn't too surprised myself with who I got my partner. Paula got Harry, so Mo was alone. I wonder... Now is... How are we paired up? Hmm, that is a good question. Due to the fact that the pairings had to be made of either tunes that liked each other, hated each other, or knew very little about each other. Perhaps Flunky made a pair that one liked the other, but the other hated the first one back? Actually, putting everything in perspective, none of us really knew anything about Harry, not even me. Which, saying it out like that, is honestly kind of upsetting. Yeesh, what's with all these stranger pairs? What, is Bessie the leader of the stranger crew the mastermind or something? Don't joke about something like that. Putting his comment about Bessie aside, he's not wrong. The only non-stranger pair is Flippy and Coach, no? You do realize what this entails, Surly. Of course, that's all the pairings, isn't it? It seems you've noticed. Ooh, who's the lone toon then? Accounting for everyone else's statements, the sole toon has to be Mo. Mo's the sole toon? Assuming all accounts are true, there's no one else it could be. I just hope no one's lying this time. It's as simple as innocent until proven guilty. Indeed. Well, I think we're done here. Anything else we need to investigate? If possible, we should look around the playground as much as we can. You go do that. I want to double check everything here once more. Alright, Paula, will you be staying here as well? I may as well. Better to stick with at least one of the tune. And, well, try to finally get Harry to investigate with us. I see. See you once the trial starts then. Don't push yourself, alright, Pete? I won't, but thank you for the comfort. What if Lou lied? Ooh, that's a good point. Easy ways to check for cards. So the only ones we don't know is Mo, Lou, and Tom. We don't know them for sure. Lou could have been lying. Lou could have had Mo as his partner because he figured Mo wouldn't tell anyone. The group of four returned to the playground. Ah, you guys. There's something I want to ask Pete. Huh? Me? While I was at Toontown Central, I saw this picnic set up. Weren't you at a picnic yesterday? Flippy mentioned something about a picnic to me. Ah, uh, yes, it was a picnic, and also my last time seeing Tom. If that's the case, do you think anything about that could be relevant to the case? Hey, I was there too! I even hosted the dang thing! Why not ask me about it, coach? You know what? Fine! Tell me everything about it, Riggy, since it looks like Tom was last seen by many at it. Pretty simple, coach buddy. I'm not your buddy! Bessie and I got Flippy, Pete, Tom, Lou, and Paula to have some oranges together. Though Lou was stinky and didn't want to eat his orange. Look, I just wasn't in the orange mood, alright? Hm, suit yourself, bucko. Hmm, well that doesn't seem relevant. You better be telling the truth this time. Super honest, coach buddy. I told you not to call me that! Let's move on. There isn't much more to investigate. The only building that seems to be open in the playground is at the gag shop. Very well, let's head over there then. If Mo has a card, someone is lying. That's a good point. They just gotta ask Mo for his card. Yeah, so really just ask Mo. They should definitely check Mo. Everyone's saying Mo sus. I ponder, would there be anything on Seaweed Street? It was located next to the missing plank. It's very much possible. Would you want to investigate it? Yes, I believe our group can split into two as well, as judging by the amount of time we were given last case, we are nearing the end of the investigation. 
very well. I'd rather stay here and investigate the playground. Same here. Looks like we get to be buddies, Oldman. It appears so. Riggy and Oldman walked into the tunnel, leaving just Surly and Pete. Very well, let's head inside. Surly would be interrupted by the noise of the dock of the boat reaching the dock right next to them. That was a bit startling. Indeed it was, though it doesn't look like there's anything special about the boat. Although the fact that this boat always circles around the dock makes me wonder. Oh no. Hmm? What is it, Pete? Pete, from the deck of the boat, looked back up at Surly. The floor of the boat somehow feels familiar. I don't understand why, though. Hmm. Interesting. We should keep that in mind, Pete. Indeed. Getting off the bridge to the boat before it lowered, Pete and Surly headed into the gag shop, in which they found... Rope! What are all these ropes doing here? I do not know. However, this is surely evidence. That's a total of... There's a total of three ropes, all of them wet. Hold on. Was that near one of the ropes? Peach reached behind an umbrella holder to find... It's an empty container? Good find, Pete. I did not notice that. Is there anything odd about it? No, it doesn't look like it. There isn't a label or anything. Hmm, perhaps the ropes could provide us a clue. Surly started with the two ropes next to each other. Stare... Yeah. Inspecting them closely. Hmm. Other than being wet, nothing seems particularly strange about it. Or oh, taking a close look at the other rope. What? Surly? Pete quickly caught Surly before he fell over completely. Ow, ow, ow. It hurts to hold you. Ugh. What was that? Surly, able to regain his composure, stood up. Are you okay, Surly? I'm fine now. However, something's clearly wrong about that specific rope, and I only wafted the air right next above it. Do you think that these ropes were used on us? That is the most logical conclusion, Pete. You're probably right. So somebody put chloroform on the rope! No, already? I've given you all enough time. Head over to the Toontown Central HQ. It's time once again. I don't want to. Pete? I don't want to. Leave Tom just lying there. I'm not exactly the nurturing type, Pete. However, we have no other choice. We have to go. Please, please tell me everything you know about this case. I want... I want to help as much as I can. All right, Pete. I'll fill you in as we walk over, all right? Thank you. Wow, I'm forcing myself to cry by doing that voice. That's crazy. <laughs> I can force myself to cry. I just found out. Pete and Surly made all their way to the Toontown Central. The Toontown Central, sorry. Surly filling Pete and all the pieces of evidence he missed out on. And once many had gathered... Yo, maybe Tom was actually trying to be a hero. That's a good point. Tom was actually tr could have tried to stop them. They could have tried. Three of them could have been tied up. Tom was might have been wet. He might have been trying to pull them all out of the water. I think that somebody took Pete, Flippy, and Lou and tried to throw them into the water. Tom came to stop them and he got bashed on the head just as he was getting ready to pull them all out of the water. I think either someone is killed amongst them or Tom somehow, killer amongst them or Tom somehow found out about the kidnapping and gone after. Not everyone is here yet. Paula's getting hairy. He has to be here for the trial, so it should be any minute now. I cannot wait to expose who did this. Indeed, this will be quite the case to solve. Even so, we will figure out who's behind this. Hmm, this entire situation is idiotic. Uh, did either of you find anything on Seaweed Street? Nope, not a just a regular old street, bucko. I see. Oh, I think I see Paula and Harry. Everyone looked at the appearance of the two. Harry swiftly lifted his sword, revealing his partner card. And walked inside the HQ. We have to go now. Surly is cleared as well. How do we know Surly is cleared? No one's at the HQ, except for... I know this will be hard for you two, or we have to go in. I know, I know. I just don't know what to expect. Me neither. However, let's solve this for Tom. I don't know if I can. 
I've already messed up so much. The pie event, forgetting about the blueprint, and now my broken promise to you and Tom. Everyone is probably wondering what's holding us up. We have to go in now. You're right, Surly. He was having a conversation with someone during the murder, I bet. And thus, the last three tunes made their way into the tune headquarters. All right, let's do our investigation. And we walk to our spots in the same location as they were before. This case. Do you think, hold on, we ne they claim to have never found the thing. But you know what I think it was? I think it was the wood plank. I think the wood plank was the thing that that Flunky hid. Why, why did Tom have, wait, no, the chloroform. Duh, the chloroform on the rope. The chloroform was the thing. Why did Tom have to die? I have to do this, not just for Tom, but for everyone. The tune or tunes that did this to us. We'll figure out just who they are. I know I'm no natural leader, but if I don't step up now, then will when will I? All right, here we go. I should refresh my memory of what I learned this investigation. Wait, we're playing from Pete's perspective? Oh. Wet. Yeah. Pairings with one or both of their cards missing are Flippy and Coach Z, Bessie and Pete, and Lou and Tom. But we know Flippy and Coach Z is legit. The ink and tape-like features of the cards will prove to be waterproof by Riggy. After Tom and Pete had fun hanging around with each other, Tom promised Pete that he'd be the first to arrive tomorrow to discuss the motive. All four tunes that were found this morning by their partner cards taken away from them. Hmm. Three ropes in the gag shop, with one of them almost knocking out Surly when we were inspecting it. Answers I seek have to be hidden in what I know. There's no going back. It's very quiet. Considering what occurred, I'd imagine so. A lot of us were affected by this case, however, we can't let that get in the way of solving this. Exactly, coach buddy. You're never gonna stop calling me that, are you? Haha, <laughs> you get me so well. Putting that aside, how about we go over what the initial witnesses to the scene of the crime saw? Yeah, that's gotta that'd be a lot of help. Some of us know very little about what happened. Very well, let's begin our discussion with that. There's something new about non-stop debates. From this point on, would you start to see press points? Sometimes certain statements can be pressed for more information. Pressing a statement will usually result in unearthing a new weak point or agree point. However, not always. By pressing statements, pressing statements will become slightly more complicated later, but for now, simply click the blue chat bubble to press any purple press points. Well, have fun. All right, here we go. To begin, we found four tunes washed up. It was quite a shocker, to put it lightly. However, only one of us of the four were deceased. We gotta find out why four tunes were kidnapped. Why? Do you have an idea, Harry? I assume Paula told you a bit about what happened. Yes, he knows that you, Flippy, and Lou were found next to Tom. Then, I assume you two were pairs? We kidnapped two pairs. The reason could be anything. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, nah, that's the wrong one. There is. Actually, Harry, we weren't two pairs. In fact, neither Flippy nor I's partner was attacked. But why you two then? Maybe... 
Maybe whoever kidnapped us just wanted to capture as many tunes related to Tom as possible? Hmm, you two were quite close to Tom, no? Now I can see that. Though, why Lou then? I don't believe he and Tom were close. Oh boy, here we go. Before we do that, how about we reveal the partners of everyone? Uh, well... I don't know them all. I should know them all. Surly filled me in that he and Riggy were partners. Well, I think I remember them all. Correct me if I'm wrong, Surly. Very well, go ahead, Pete. Alright, thank you, Surly. Okay, so first of all, Bessie and I were partnered up in the Barely Knows category. Yep, I showed my partner card to the ones that were investigating. Next up, Flippy was paired up with Coach Z in the Trusts Each Other category. Yep, that's right. And the third pair was Riggy and Surly. Indeed, and I could safely say we were in the Barely Knows category as well. Next up was Old Man and Giggles. Indeed, you're correct on that. The fifth pairing was Paula and... Wait, her partner was... Them, right? It was Harry. Her partner was Harry, yes? He showed his partner card, did he not? Yes, yeah, sorry, it was just that he showed it so fast I barely noticed. No worries, dear. With those five pairs out of the way, the last pair was... Tom and Lou. With Mo being the sole tune. Hmm, then it should be obviously where Killer is, no? Just say it, I bet everyone has the same idea, right? Do I even need to? It's obvious who killed that beige dog. If you won't say it, I will. Lou, you're the most suspicious because of your pairing to Tom. Yep, no surprise here. I'm a major suspect because of this. I'm sorry, dear, but out of everyone, you simply being Tom's partner is ground for suspicion. Suspicion. But, like, he was attacked too. Not to mention he was probably attacked because of his partnership. My question is, if there was a way an attacker or attackers could have known about Tom and Lou's partnership. Pete and Flippy were not a pair. Wait, Pete and Flippy aren't a pair. Maybe, uh, one of them slipped up at some point. Where's the hate each other pair? Oh, good point. Maybe... Maybe that's what Tom and Pete were supposed to be. Because in their past lives, they hated each other. Wait, maybe... Maybe it was just an assumption they made? An assumption, but based on what? Hold that thought, Flippy. How about we consider the following? What were the attackers' plan? How are you so sure there weren't multiple attackers? There were four tunes attacked, so there's only... There was no way only one tune did this. If only one tune managed to do all this? That'd be insane! Though I'ma just guess that this pair was trying to kill another pair. After all, what better way to be safe than to kill another pair, am I right? You buffoons are all missing the point. There's clear reasoning why Lou is our biggest suspect. Could it actually just be Lou? No, there's no way someone could pull this all off by themselves, but how could have the culprits figured out Tom's partner? Regardless of where this case leads to, I will find the truth for Tom. Alright, here's another debate. Well, Mo, why is it me then? Simple. Never told anyone about your motive partner. But what if he did? About that. Lou, did you tell anyone about your partnership? Ah, <sighs> Mo's right about one thing. I never told anyone my motive partner, alright? See? What did I tell you? It's obvious, isn't it? Oh, sure it is. Uh, no, I never told anyone. Huh, just admit it. I don't need to say anymore. Can you really be sure about this, Mo? Do you think I'd be saying this if I wasn't? But why? Do you have another reason why it has to be Lou? Fine. You want a real reason? I'll give you a reason. No one else ever saw his partner card. Not only did he not tell anyone, no one ever saw his card. Are we rush aren't we rushing to conclusions here? Yeah, I I trust Lou. Um. Hold 
Hold on. Uh, then maybe instead of proving Lou. No, that doesn't make sense. Uh, never told anyone about your motive partner. Oh wait, no one saw his card. Wait, no, someone else definitely saw Lou's partner card. Because mine, Lou, Flippy, and Tar Tom's partner cards were all taken. Ah, you're right. All of our partner cards were taken, so maybe uh, the culprit behind this found out Lou's partner when they took Tom? Was this the assumption that you were thinking of, Flippy? If Lou never shared his partner card, then the only way would be to learn from Tom, and we can't ask him anymore. Well, Coach, what's your idea? Why are you asking me? Hold on, what if Lou did share his partner card and just is hiding this fact? Did you realize if I did that, I probably wouldn't be here, you know? Also, if I was, like, the killer, why the heck would I kidnap Flippy and Pete? I know I'm a major suspect because of my partnership to Tom, but I literally couldn't do this alone. Another pair has to be behind this. Then who is to say you didn't work with another pair, hmm? Wait, but how would that make any sense? Like, only one pair can leave at most, right? Indeed, as according to the motive's rules, either one can kill one's own partner to avoid execution and risk being harmed, work together with your partner to kill another platoon being able to escape with said partner, kill another pair with your partner with not only being able to escape with your partner but having zero risk of execution, or killing the soul toon simply being the same as Clause 2 with the added benefit of having a survivable execution if caught. To put it simply, there's no reason for two pairs to work together. After all, if multiple pairs committed crimes, then only the more recent one would count. So in that case, if Lou was working with another pair, yeah, I'd literally have zero reason not to immediately say who it was. You're right, dear. I believe it would have been inappropriate to continue berating you. Well, everyone, what should we talk about next? How about the fact that you shouldn't be smiling through all this, Riggy? Ha, <laughs> maybe later. Can we talk about something actually important? Fine, my bad. Well, uh, how about we talk about the murder weapon? It has to be the plank, right? I can't see it being anything else. The only wound was his head, right? Please tell me that's the case, Surly. Don't let it be something more slow and painful. I couldn't detect anything else with the lack of tools at my disposal. Lou is becoming less of a suspect now, more of just a victim. I never suspected Lou in the first place. It doesn't make any sense just to accuse him just because he's the partner. It's horrible to think that the plank was the same one Tom tripped over before. Then it has to be someone strong, right? Not necessarily. However, that remark reminds me how everyone's knowledge of the plank wasn't equal. Ah, you're right, not everyone knew about the plank. Wasn't it that only around eight of us knew about the plank? More specifically, the ones who didn't know were... Mo. It was the five tunes that searched Lighthouse Lane when we first arrived at the dock, yes? I'm glad you noticed, Pete. The group that Mo rallied to Lighthouse Lane all met up with the rest of you after you fixed the plank, yes? My question to you then is simple. Out of all the ones that knew about the plank being loose, who told anyone of it? I told Harry about it. I wanted to make sure he wouldn't trip on it in case it got loose again. I wasn't going to be outside anyways. Well, anyone else? No one else spoke up. So, no one else, right? Wait a minute, doesn't this decrease the amount of suspects? It sure does, bucko. Ah, that's right. For those that didn't know about the board, then... They couldn't have done this! Wait just a second, Flippy. Huh? I agree that Old Man Mo and I couldn't have done it, since none of us knew about the plank. What about Riggy? Since Surly was his partner, he could have told him. Hmm, he actually has a point. I, the soul tune, Old Man and Giggles, had no way of knowing about that loose board. Ah, but since Paula told Harry and Surly was there to see the loose plank, then who the culprit could be is obvious, no. It's one of you wretched pairs, meaning it's either Flippy, Coach, Pet, Pete. Ugh. 
Either it's one of you wretched pairs, meaning it's either Flippy, Coach, Pete, Bessie, Paula, Harry, Surly, or Riggy. You're including us too? I know we have to be thorough, but do you really think Bessie or I or Flippy and Coach would do this to Tom? Hmm. Any of you buffoons could be to blame. After all, the theory that one of the four on the ground could have been in on it isn't void because of our discussion, yes? Even if I still doubt Lou. Could, uh, could you not say all that so smugly? We get it, they're suspects. Do you really think everyone understands the situation at hand, Coach? There's two maniacs in this very room and there's only 12 of us left. Just because you're right doesn't mean you should be suspecting Flippy and Pete. There has to be something proving them innocent. Then explain how if you're so confident. And there you have it. No proof whatsoever. I think I have the proof. I knew if I spoke up about this before, it'd make me even more of a suspect than I already was. However, to put it into words, I'm not sure if any of you will believe me. Say whatever you know, Lou. Please, I trust you. Exactly, if you know something, please say it. Ooh boy, if you say so. Ready for some news, killer. News I bet you've never thought you'd hear. Thinking about what I know, I'm almost sure it can't be Flippy Coach Pete or Bessie. How? Well, my reasoning is... Ooh, here we go. Okay, we get an extra. Well, I assume you all got that us four were knocked out. Seriously, not a fun thing to happen to us. Anyways, I can vouch for Flippy Pete and their partners. Can you guess how? Simple, I wasn't fully asleep. Yeah, that's right. And I can tell you all exactly how. My gut, my glue curse. Yep, all that glue did something to me. Probably made me slightly immune to certain toxins. Me being sorta of immune allowed me to see something. Wait a minute, he was immune to the chloroform! Flippy and Pete being dragged to the same area as me. You, you're telling me that Lou huffed so much glue over his days of working in the glue store, he was immune to the chloroform's effects? Well, not exactly. My memory is pretty fuzzy, so... I can definitely remember taking a peep when I was placed down on the ground and seeing some blue figures being placed down beside me. Do you have any idea how terrible it was to lay there for, honestly, I don't know how long? The waves got all of us wet and I had to stay perfectly still as I did so. After some time, I heard a terrible noise, one that almost blew my cover. And seeing what happened to Tom, I can only imagine it was to blow the head. The blow to the head, excuse me. Tom, you... You really died right next to me, and Lou had to hear it? Whoever's behind this, they're monsters. Horrible, horrible monsters. So then, that's it? Neither Flippy Bessie nor Pete could be behind this. How so, dear? Simple, if Flippy and I, are, or Pete or Bessie were behind this, then why'd Lou remember both of them being placed down? Wouldn't they have, I don't know, laid themselves at the last moment and splashed themselves with water? Very well, I suppose your horrendous curse actually has some use then. Wow, congratulations to me. I got to be scarred for life hearing Tom die right next to me. Is there anything else you remember, Lou? The only thing I can remember is being tied up. I'm still feeling sore. What about you two? Better than before, I guess. I'm, I'm fine. Other than having to pick up Surly, I haven't even noticed the remaining pain in my arms. Having to stay perfectly still for your life definitely wouldn't have helped your soreness, Lou. I can't imagine how tensed up you must have been. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Look, I'd rather not just think about this anymore. I completely understand, Lou. And thank you, Lou. You really saved us there. Indeed, Lou. Telling such information that no deadly has traumatized you. It is quite... no, very admirable. Hmm, whatever. Then that means our possible culprits left are Surly, Riggy, Paula, and Harry, no? It certainly does. Well, which pair did this then? It literally can't be me. Literally? I think the word you're looking for is probably bucko. 
That sure isn't what you should be- that isn't what you should be focusing on, Ricky. As for me, I have zero reason to commit this crime. And even if I did, why would I have helped so much investigating? Hmm, unless that was on purpose? Hmm, why are you blaming Surly? Ah, not act- actually, we didn't do it. Although, wouldn't that mean it's Paul and Harry? Yikes, so those two were suspects last time. Well, you were too! That's not the point. Can we really be sure it's one of our pairs? I know for a fact neither I nor Harry did anything. Exactly, Paula. It wasn't any of us last time, so it can't be us this time. We're just natural false suspects. That doesn't make any sense. I know I didn't do anything and Paula couldn't do this alone, so there's only one possible answer. I did nothing! It's obviously that psycho Riggy with his partner certainly probably sabotaging the investigation. You really think I did that? but certainly did nothing suspicious during the investigation. Harry, you didn't see him do anything. Oldman and Riggy, you two investigated more with him. Did you not? Surely you would have seen something wrong, right? Leaves the other three pairs and Mo, and now Mo can sweat. It's either Paul and Harry or Giggles and Oldman. Ooh, I'd rather not delve into raw belief. However, considering my time with Surly in the investigation, I doubt he was trying to steer us in the wrong direction. In the case that all oh, that was a fib, I'd be greatly, genuinely impressed. Wait, you guys are actually suspecting us? Are you serious right now? Of course, we're suspecting you, Riggy. You're, you're just so much. I understand your suspicion of Riggy. However, we're not behind this. I trust Surly, but Riggy, those two investigated as much as they could. I, I trust them. Then Paula and Harry is your answer, then? I feel like I can trust those that helped investigate a lot, but can I really say it's Paula or Harry who took Tom away from me? I can't do it. I, I suspect them more, but I, I just can't accuse someone who could be innocent. I'm sorry, my- You seem to be having quite the internal struggle, Pete. Is it because you cannot bring yourself to suspect someone full-heartedly? Or is it because you know there's still more to this case? That's, that's right! Well, good, there's still more to this course. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> no, excuse me. Well, of course, there's still more to this case. We gotta figure out if it was Surly or Riggy who did the killing blow. Indeed. The next question is how did they work together? Of course, you'd both say that. Could Surly have somehow been tricked by Riggy? Oh, dear. Flippy, there has to be more to this. We need to look over everything we possibly can before targeting a pair. You're right, Pete. Well, why don't we ask Flunky? He's been super silent and we're super split! Huh, <laughs> so I've noticed. So, if you tunes are as split as you say you are... Wait, are we gonna do that again? <laughs> I've been keeping silent this whole time, so because it's so amusing seeing you all accuse each other. And seeing how split you tunes are, I think it's only appropriate for another scrum debate. Just like last time, head to the side of the HQ depending on what you believe. So it's happening again. So it is, Pete. So it is. I assume you'll be leading us, yes? But me? It makes more sense that way, Pete. Alright, I'll... I'll do it. Okay. Let's see. I know I didn't do anything. A pair has to be behind this. Just because we know a pair had to do this doesn't mean it's Riggy and Surly. All we have to figure out now is certainly a Riggy dealt the killing blow. Simple! The answer is neither! The pair could have also done the killing. Why should we trust Riggy over these two? Oh jeez, I messed up. I messed up! Oh, here, Riggy. I understand how you feel, but Riggy's attitude can't be your main reason. Lou said he saw blue figures yet. What if he was seeing an assailant as well? All I said was I saw blue figures laid down next to me. Don't put more words in my mouth. Besides, could Harry or Paula even be strong enough to pull out a plank? The plank was already loosened, so strength isn't a limitation. Surely probably tampered with the evidence to frame us. Admit it. But someone was always with Surly, right? He couldn't alter any evidence. I just can't trust whatever he has to say. It has to be blind belief. The only thing that we're blind of is this case as a whole. Empty container.
Wait, is Coach Z against Flippy here? He is, because he thinks that Lou did it. Oh, sorry, that Paula and Harry did it. There's one huge thing we need to consider. We don't even have a concrete explanation for the things Surly and I found in the gag shop. Before we truly accuse anyone, we have to figure that out first. Huh, I guess that's fine. We don't have a time limit, right? No, there isn't a specific time limit for trials, but don't take the entire day. So, what you find in the gag shop, hmm? Well, not only do we find some rope, but we're very sure we're used to tie us up, but an empty container. That was in the gag shop? Yes, indeed. We found both of these items in the shop. When inspecting the ropes themselves, one of them almost knocked me out. You, you almost got knocked out. Yes, and that was just for me wafting the air directly near it. Luckily, Pete was there to catch me. Oh gosh, if Pete wasn't there to catch you... Wait a minute. If I really think about it, the reason that rope almost caused Surly to pass out... Everyone wi- We have to figure out how this connects to the case. Ooh. Let's see. So, Surly almost passed out? Yes, Bessie, I did. It's very much possible that chemicals were used in this case. Well, duh, I'd much rather play the blame game, but you do you. This is a waste of time. We already know which two are behind this. Hold on, Harry. There could be something we're missing. Wait, are you thinking about... The missing item? The, oh, the motive item, excuse me, I just barely could read that. The motive item? Yes, the motive item, the thing Flinky hid somewhere in the dock. If the motive item was something to help block Noctunes out, then Silly must have almost passed out due to that, right? I bet that extra motive has to be part of this case, there's no doubt. Though, do we really need to be having this discussion? We need to be figuring out who did this. Hold on, if the motive item was something useful for knocking tunes out, and we were definitely knocked out, then if what I'm thinking is true, what the what the motive item was is It's the it's the it's the chloroform. That's exactly it. Really? That the container you found was the motive item itself? You do realize I wasn't saying that seriously, right? Even if you were, what else could it be? Funky said it was some sort of item hitting in Donald's dock, and we've never seen a container like that before, right? That's right. Okay, and if it was, we have more su important things to do, like narrow down our four suspects. Exactly. There's zero reason to know about this silly additional motive now, is there? Wait! It could really help us to know this, dear. Are you saying that because you're a suspect, Paula? Then again, it'd be really helpful to know what it was, no doubt about it. What? Why? I believe the reasoning is quite simple. Any loose ends, especially those that pertain to the ones that were intact, must be found out. After all, what good is it to simply discard the time we've been given in this trial room? The thing is, I don't think there's any way to know about what that motive item really was. Like, I'd assume it was some sort of chemical, but what if it's something super specific? Well, why not ask Flunky then? Oh please, if this super Flunky would tell us! You say that, however he did answer Oldman and I's question last trial. The question then becomes whether or not he'll do the same this time. Come on, Flunky, you gotta give us at least this, right? This extra motive was technically for everyone, right? And if you don't want to reveal that the container was literally the motive or not, then you can just tell us what the motive does. Hmm, fine. He accepted it? Guess all we needed to do was just ask, huh? Listen up closely because I'll only say this once. This substance is not only clear, but odorless. It emits fumes that dissipate within a second, said fumes being able to knock a tune out for an hour with a deep inhale. However, continuously breathing in the fumes will kill a tune within a minute. It's quite potent. Finally, if you make someone consume the liquid itself rather than inhaling the fumes, well, they won't kill them. However, there's good reason to do so. If said enough. I see. Duh, so we shouldn't even get a hint on its container, bucko. Seriously, I think we should know, as a penalty for the killer being stupid enough to not end me. Fine, but only something vague. Whatever container the liquid was stored in, while it could be moved around, placing it down anywhere wasn't placed initially was forbidden. Hmm. Good. That should teach them a lesson. I suppose it shall. So, that was a lot to take in, however... I'll be sure to remember what Flunky said. 
You might have been right about the oranges. Wait, the oranges? Wait a minute. Okay, well, at least we know. Then there's no doubt that the motive item was used. The oranges were laced. <gasps> Wait, who ate the oranges? Wait, no, Lou didn't eat the orange. Yes, exactly. I suppose that doesn't help with the whole suspect situation. Well, of course it doesn't. Pete, are you just trying to stall for time? Hold on. Flunky stated that there's a beneficial reason to make someone consume the motive liquid, yes? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he said that. If that's the case, then I might have an idea, especially considering one of the suspects. Hold on. Is Paula... Is she talking about that? Wait, what is... The oranges! Oh my gosh, you guys got it! Are you talking about the picnic we had? A, a picnic? Wait, like the one Riggy hosted? Hmm, what about it, coach buddy? Ask Paula and Pete! I just wanted to confirm if it was the one you hosted! I'll explain what I meant, Coach Z. Please do, Paula. Well, considering that surprise food was involved... That's it, the oranges! What now, Flippy? Pete, don't you realize, there were seven of us and four oranges, and the one to not only bring said oranges but pass them out was... No, but if we accuse him, that implies Surly is... But it all makes sense! I'm sorry for switching sides, Pete, but we have to face the truth. Riggy must have made Tom consume the motive liquid at the party. The food was a surprise to even Bessie. Riggy? Well, say something! Riggy, did you somehow manage this alone? Well, so this is what it comes to, Buckos. You want to say that I only kidnapped and drugged four tunes to the dock, took all their partner cards, slammed Tom to the forehead with a plank, and I or Surly found the motive item and fed it to Tom at the picnic? Yes. Then to that, Bucko, I'll say this. I've never been so complimented before in my life! You really think I did all that? Because if you do, Bucko, I'm very impressed. IMPRESSED! Did you really do it, Ricky? Of course he did. He's the most obvious unhinged menace here. Not only me not to mention the way he responded. Hm, I suppose we have our culprit. But then, did Surly help him? I did not. I have zero personal reason to commit or help commit a crime. I want to believe that, but a comment you made before... Indeed, figuring out who's part of who is going to take some time. What, you planted something? Now more than ever, I just need to stay safe. I wasn't planning a murder then, Flippy. Um, excuse me, Surly, how about you don't steal my spotlight, buddy? Thanks, pal, for your silence. So, Flippy, you got this whole case figured out, huh? If so, then I want to know how I did it. Go ahead, bucko, give it your best shot. Did Ricky really do it? But when would he have gotten the motive items? You did this to not just Tom, but Blue, Pete, and I... I'll... I'll put an end to this for all of us. Wait, Flippy! Huh? You're, you're missing one thing. No, Pete, what else is there to talk about? I know how much this trial means to you, but... This is the truth. Please, Pete, let's end this. I want to trust Surly too, but Riggy has to be behind this. Flippy, I want to end this too, but this isn't how to end it. Something seriously wrong here. But he didn't specifically invite Tom, Flippy. I guess so, but wouldn't he know Tom would like a fun little event to attend? Perhaps that isn't sufficient proof. Wait, Funky didn't state any sort of syringes being available to us. The only way Ricky could have gotten the liquid inside is if he made a more obvious hole in the orange, which didn't exist. I mean, well, he was given a syringe by... by Surly? If Shirley somehow did have medical equipment, wouldn't he have exclaimed at some point he was missing something? Well, 
I don't think Surly had syringes in the first place. And even if he did, they were probably taken away by Flunky in the beginning. Okay, maybe, but you have to consider. That's not true. A lot of the information was the accounts of various tunes. Old Man was with them for the entire thing, and I joined them for a large chunk of their investigation. I guess so, but... Oh, you can't hide it in your hut. You have to put it back. Believe me, Flippy, I wanted this as soon as possible as well, but... There's no way either of them could have hid the motive item in their hut. Because remember what Funky said, the motive container couldn't be hidden anywhere except for where it was placed initially. If we're going by that empty container being the motive item, then it couldn't be taken to any of their huts. I guess I was making a lot of assumptions, but... What's the answer then? Is it really Harry and Paula behind this? We have to take a stand, Pete. Because if I was completely wrong, then please solve this. You're probably smarter than me anyways. Oh snap, let's hear it for Pete. Well then, bucko, what's your answer? Who done it, hmm? This whole time we've been narrowing down our suspects for different reasons. And the biggest problem being why did the culprit kidnap Flippy and I? It, it just doesn't make sense. I I know what you're all going to say, that I'm count continuing to stall for time. But I swear, answering this question of mine could be the key to solving this case. Very well, Pete. What is this question of yours? This better be good. I'm just quaking at the stand. Just why were Flippy and I taken? We stated that it was because we were close to Tom. However, if you really think about it, that doesn't hold up. Really? How could that line of reasoning be off track? Tom was obviously the main target. You three were just afterthoughts in the killer's plan. We were the afterthoughts? Is that really it? I feel like I feel like there's evidence that disproves that. If anything would prove Tom might have been the main target, It'd be this evidence. Uh... Hold on, I gotta look at this. Tom's conversation with Pete. But does Tom and Pete have Tom promised Pete that you first arrived to discuss the motive with everyone? Actually, Mo, I have evidence that proves Tom might not have been the target after all. Really? What could it possibly be? It's Tom's own words. Well, I think we should discuss the scary motive with others, you know. Perhaps Toons would be willing to share who they're partnered with? I'll bring it up tomorrow, and I'll be sure to be the first to arrive. He wanted to be the first one to arrive at the dock. In other words, it's possible his involvement in this case was a complete accident. Oh, please. How can we know that this conversation happened? You could just be making this all up. Well, no. While I didn't hear the conversation myself, I did leave those two alone at that time. I could definitely say that much. So what? Your only evidence is Pete's word? Even if Flippy left these two alone, that only proves they talked, not what they talked about. I'm sure there has to be other evidence proving Pete. He wouldn't lie about something like this. Exactly, Coach Buddy. Pete's a good tune. I am so sick of that nickname. I don't care about dumb nicknames right now. You need physical proof, Pete. This claim of yours is too weak. You're right. If you're feeling trapped, Pete, don't. Don't think you need to prove your words, rather. No, you're right, and shape the evidence you have around that idea. But aren't those statements the same? It's a difference in mind, not reality. I believe you can do this, Pete, considering how personal this case is to you. However, you have to know you're running out everyone's patience. I assume you understand this very well. If you cannot prove your words now, then I doubt this will end well for any of us. Then I'll do it. I'll show you the evidence that proves my theory. Okay. Let's see. Tom was waiting there and got snipped for it. Well, Pete, where's the problem in that we can... You all were kidnapped early this morning. And then carried to the playground? Don't forget that they were knocked out using the motive. They made sure to tie all of you up so you couldn't escape. And then you placed you all down at the shore. Finally, they yanked out the plank and finished it. They tried to mess us up by stealing our partner cards. Exactly, there are no holes in this argument. Hmm.
No, that's not possible. That all four of you being tied up is impossible? How could you say that? If Tom truly was supposed to be a target, then why weren't there four ropes used? There are only three ropes that were found, Surly. Oh, that's absolutely right. The presumption that all four of you were tied up at the same time doesn't make sense. Apologies for not releasing that myself, Pete. This trial has been quite stressing. It's alright, Surly. I understand. I appreciate that, Pete. Well, I'm certainly convinced Pete was right. If there were only three ropes in use, then yeah, Tom wasn't the intended target. Okay, but how does that in any way change this case? Simple, Giggles. By removing one tune needed to be captured, not only does the amount of labor required for this case decrease, but we now don't have a proper reason for why Lou was kidnapped. Um, excuse me? What's that supposed to mean? I do ponder. Just why were those three taken from their humble abodes? Is it possible that the assailant made a horrendous assumption? Flippy did mention it could have been possible. Is Olden trying to hint at something? Wait a minute, an assumption, an assumption. Pete, I have zero clue if this is right, but if you have a trail of thought, tell us. All right, please let this be right. Pete, I feel like the initial target, no, targets, they had to have been us. As for who did this, I know it's just an assumption, but I could see it being the truth. If I'm wrong, then please tell me. All right. I think I know what was a mat, I think I know what was a mass piece? Someone mistaked us for a motive pairing. The only time someone might have even thought we were, someone mistaked us, someone, was when you approached me first thing yesterday. Remember, you wanted to ask me something, but... We were interrupted, and you said the following. Wait, oh, right. Let's talk about this later, and that's exactly it. Our conversation made someone think we were paired up. Wait, so you mean when I asked you about... Ah, good morning, Flippy. Pete, you're quite near my door. Were you about to tell me something? Well, uh, I know it's kind of awkward to ask, but purely hypothetical. But is it worth trying to pursue something with someone if we can get out of here? Pursue something? Do you mean like... Who? Flippy interrupted us. I think it was someone large and green. Ooh, large and green, you say? The only two of that are... Really now? Have you forgotten who our four potential suspects were? Wait, yeah, wait just a second. Neither Mo nor I are potential suspects. We were cleared because neither of us knew about that stupid loose floorboard. Precisely. And not only that, why would I, the sole Toon, have any reason not to just kill but kidnap Toons, hmm? Hmm, I believe Flippy's memory is insufferable as ever. Well, who's to say either of you needed to know about the loose board to yank it out, huh? You two have lots of inertia. That may be so, but there's nothing that points towards Oldman and I besides my strength. Hmm, you assume someone large is automatically strong? What ironically weak reasoning. Fine, I'll prove without a doubt now how this case could not have been orchestrated by me. I doubt it's either of us, but I wouldn't be surprised if the buffoon next to me committed murder. Oh, really, Mo? I have plenty of reasons to why it couldn't be me. Giggles and Mo, the tune that I overheard Flippy and I, it has to be one of them. It's actually not entirely impossible. You, Lou, Giggles, and Oldman all searched the playground for the motive. Either one or both of you could have found the loose board and didn't mention it to us. Hmm, you actually have a semblance of a point. But there's no way you don't despise Lou, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you just like Flippy and I. Hmm, how nice of you to say, Pete. This is exactly my point, Mo. I could see you kidnapping three tunes by yourself out of spite of them. Oh, please, as if you weren't steaming about their actions during our more peaceful times. As for why to kidnap three, I can certainly think of why you would.
Giggles is right, stealing our motive cards wouldn't do much as Bessie and Coach Z were able to easily back us up. Exactly, your argument doesn't make sense, Mo. Though, wait just a minute, why did you only mention Flippy and Pete, hmm? What if Tom tripped on the plank and it got loose and Mo just killed him? Oh, that's a good point. You say that you couldn't switch with any alive, Mo, and I believe that. However, you could have switched with Tom as long as your partner was on board with it. Well, well, Loco think he's the smartest tune in the world, hmm? Do you truly believe I pulled something as ludicrous as that? The amount of assumptions you had to make to come to that conclusion is simply laughable. Congratulations, now get moving to an actual accusation. Congratulations, now get moving. You said that to Flippy and I before. For Susan, you mean like, what are you two doing up so quickly? Ah, uh, just wondering about things. Hmm, how specific. We could talk about this later, Pete. Indeed. Congratulations, now get moving. There's no doubt about it, the tune that mistaked this for repair was you. Hmm, so what, Pete? Even if I had reasoning to believe you were a pair, that doesn't explain how I could possibly have a partner, hmm? So go ahead and try. The solution won't be kind to you anyways. Very well, then. Mo's practically admitting to have a partner. Considering everything we know, the only alive partner Mo could have... ...has to be... Uh... Hold on. Yeah. Lou! Considering all the repairs of both the members alive, the only other person who could have possibly lied with the moment partner is Lou! Lou and Mo are partners? Is that seriously true? There's the hate partners! Hmm, seems somebody has to have gone silent, hmm? I bet you all assume because of the silence that Pete is in the right, no? However, Pete, it doesn't matter how much blathering comes from your mouth, you still have zero evidence. So, how about we have some rounds of trivia, you no? Know? Because when you realize you cannot answer any of my questions, you'll realize... Oh my gosh, it's corporate clash music! It's the boss bot music! Sorry, I just really like this song. I love this song. Trivia, who does he think he is? Wait. No, no. I can't let him get in my head, he's just trying to make me behave irrationally. Well, Mo, ask your questions, we're waiting. Better ask him quick, let's keep this train moving! Will you just shut it for once, Riggy? Complain about Riggy later, just ask your question, Mo. Gladly. If you really believe Lou and I could be partners, then how do you explain there being zero evidence of any switching at our huts, hmm? If this case happened within an hour of the body discovery announcement, how would I have enough time to hide the evidence without leaving obvious tracks? And before you say that I still have the cards in my pocket, I assure you this is the only one I have. Giggles can check if he wants. In fact, no need. I'll just invert my pockets right this instant. Hmm, he doesn't have anything in his pockets. Mo could have easily had the partner causing him right before the trial, but there should have been time for him to assure that there is no evidence laying behind. The evidence that Mo had the time to ensure all of his tracks are... Hold on, Tom's conversation with Pete. Considering that Tom did go early... Well, go on, Pete, finish that sentence, or do you realize how that argument makes zero sense? There was a deep time for you to ensure all your tracks were covered, because not only were you not present for the beginning part of the investigation, but you were there with Giggles and Paula searching each of the huts. Oh, he's right, Mo was there searching with us. Gah, he even suddenly ran away from us once others arrived. Did anyone know where he went after that? Well, well, he simply brushed past us and headed towards Barnacle Boulevard. Dang it, Bessie and I should have followed him. But we couldn't have known what Mo was up to, Coach. Hmm, very well. However, how could you even begin to explain something I'm surprised no one has even thought of? Considering the blood splatter of the killing blow, how could I have possibly gotten my clothes cleaned? Well, you probably just wash yourself in the water, and we have plenty of clothes in our huts. Because you had around an hour, right? There's plenty of time to dry off before shaking yourself. Well, is he right, Mo? I suppose the small rabbit can put things together. A surprise considering his locked of investigation. Shut it! At this point, now there isn't even enough of a reason for you to be asking these questions. You're the killer, and that's that. Hmm. Do you really all feel the same way? I sure do. 
Yeah, I bet you forced Lou to work with you somehow, dangling escape as motivation. Frankly, that conclusion makes sense. Oh, really? You all seem to be believing far too much in this false bearing theory of yours. I haven't heard any actual points against me being the sole tune, as none exists. That doesn't... There's nothing about the pairings we've known about that doesn't make sense. You're just all choosing to believe a false narrative. The pairings we thought we knew. It was Bessie and I, both of us not really known the other before. Flippy and Coach Z, two tunes that trusted each other. Both by Ricky and Surly as well as Woman and Giggles, both pairings not knowing each other much before. Paul and Hera, despite all she's done, really neither knows much about the other, considering how much Harry stays inside. And before we believed Tom and Lou were the last pairing... Wait a minute. There were no hate pairings! You say there's no evidence you can't be the sole tune, but there haven't been any notable hate pairings! And <laughs> you and Lou being one makes perfect sense! Oh my gosh, a whole bunch of people just showed up. Yes, this is, this is Toontown Rompa, we're in the middle of the case. Tutorial Tom is dead! <laughs> Well, Mo, do you have any objections to that statement? Or are you ready to give up? I have high doubts you can think of anything else to say. Hmm, you really think you have me cornered, don't you? We've proven that you and Lou are truly partners, Mo. Oh, please. I bet I could count her any- So, then you figured everything out, Pete? If so, then state my involvement in this case. I'm sure you'll realize it very soon. Lou, why? Why did you help him? Okay, well, Pete, you've done this well. I'm sure you can figure this out. Wait a sec, would you just help Mo willingly? Coach, did you, do you think Lou did this without any coercion? It's not a nice thought, but you can't say it's not possible. I want to trust Lou helped for a selfless reason, but we have to pursue any possibility, especially since both of them would have gotten to leave if Mo got away with it. He has a point. Lou... Lou could just be a selfish tune. I have zero clue if that's the case, but if it's a possibility, it must be considered. Did you seriously help Mo out because you're partners? The why is it important? At least not yet. However, I'll admit, I faked my pain. What pain do you mean, Lou? Do you mean the arms? Yes, the arms, Pete. I suppose I should have specified that. Yes, you should have! Don't leave any detail behind! Although I admit I faked the pain in my arms... Whatever pain Pete and Flippy had, I followed after them. But Lou, why? Why would you help Mo like this? You helped a murderer! Please, Lou, if somehow, someway, Mo is forcing your hand, please tell us. Hold on, I want to agree with, with Flippy. Mm. The point makes sense, but it's not the truth. What does that mean? Ugh. Hold it right there, Lou. I don't think you were faking your pain because you were the first to express any sort of pain. He was? Hate to cut the conversation, but I'm tired of being wet. I'm getting up. Lou hastily tried to get up, however. Ow, ow, ow. Lou, you okay there? Yeah, just my arms hurt a lot. My arms have been feeling pretty sore too, especially the joints. I'm the same. God, that's right! But why try to hide that? Why pretend it was just an act? What's something that, while loosened, still would have been difficult for someone of my stature to yank out and use without pain? Yeah, you don't need the answer to that. It's pretty obvious it was the pink that caused my arm pain. Hmm, so this was your plan all along? Made me think I was going to escape, only for you to sacrifice yourself just so I can't? So then... The one who actually killed Tom was... But that's only if Tom was actually killed with the plank and not by something else. 
move? Really? You go from practically admitting it to yourself to state it could have been another weapon? Honestly, it's quite humorous. I'll be completely honest with what went down. Mo and I used one rope each to tie both of you up. We then took you all to the boat in the middle of the playground. Well, if you're just going to unveil anything, I'd rather do the honors. Hmm, getting to explain Lou's case myself is actually quite exhilarating. Too bad I'll only get to do this once. Just- <gasps> You're right! He died from the chloroform! It was all over the rope! Certainly. You want to hear what happened? Be my guest. Ugh, why do we need to carry them rather than drag them? There can't be any evidence. Besides, we're here. Placing Flippy and Pete down, the two looked at each other. Hmm. I find this situation quite ironic. Out of everyone to work with, my greatest enemy. And yet, it seems simply natural to do so. Hmm. Huh, wonder why that is. I just... Why did it have to be these two? Because they made it so obvious to me that they were a pairing that it's not what they naturally deserve. Did you actually check their soldiers? Huh, do you doubt me? Besides, the ropes had their entire torso and arms together, therefore... Wait, what's going on over there? What? Shoot, someone's here! In a panic, Mo took Pete and threw him overboard. You idiots! You see someone coming and you throw him overboard? You have to do the same now. Oh, fine! Wait, that was... Pete! Flippy! Hold on, you two, I'm coming! Arms, don't fail me now! He's already going after them. You stay here. I had a third rope in the gag shop. Don't let him get away. He hasn't even noticed us. Come on. Come on, you two, get up. You stay right there. Ah, Mo, what happened to them? If you even think about struggling, the worst will happen to you. What? Mo? Mo, I got the rope. Took you long enough. Please, don't do this. Mo, cover his mouth so he can't talk. Oh my gosh, he died from the chloroform! Any other sounds, Tom, and you're dead. Now what? I just can't stay here forever. Give me some time to think, Mo. Well, what? Think of something quick. Who knows when the morning announcement will be? Hold on. There's a loose plank over here. We can hide Tom. Fine, just hurry up. Ugh! My lord, could you be any slower? I've been here for over a minute by now. Almost there. Well, aren't you gonna... Ah! You two are absolute monsters. Tom died thinking we were both dead. Perhaps, however, I suppose you'll get the satisfaction of watching Lou get executed. I can't believe I have to sit next to these two. They're both just smiling like they didn't commit some horrendous crime. It's one thing for Riggy to smile off horrible events, but this, this is just the worst morals I've ever seen. Glad to know I'm moving up on the official Coach Z tier list. That wasn't an invitation for you to speak. How can you smile at a time like this, Lou? You're, you're about to be executed. I must say, even I'm surprised at how calm you're taking your arriving death, Lou. Or perhaps you're simply too dumb to realize what's about to happen. Oh my lord, can you be any slower? I've been here for over a minute by now. That's what you said back then. So what? Yes, you took your sweet time yanking that plank out. We were just told that. So Mo, let me repeat what I said. I can only be the killer if the plank was what was killed Tom. Uh, hello? How could anything else be the murder weapon, Lou? I literally saw everything that went down. Oh, of course the biggest idiot in the world doesn't get it. Idiots! I'm not the idiot here! You killed Tom, Lou! No one else could have, and that's that! Stop snickering at me and tell me you're wrong. Ha! Huh, seeing Mo this angry is just hilarious! Wait just a second, how could something else have been the murder weapon? Could it be? Of course. Of course what? Looks like you don't get it, do you? What a shame. Don't get it? No, no! You couldn't have done something that would smart me, Lou. You're just some stupid mouse that ended that beige dog. Oh gosh, oh darn for me. I guess you'll have to get someone to explain it for you, Mo. Shut up, Lou. Just shut up! There's zero way someone else killed Tom. I was there. I know everything. You're the culprit. There's someone that knows everything. You clearly didn't realize this. Here 
Here we go. The plank loop hold. So there's no doubt. Did you seriously forget about all the blood? There's zero way he could have lived. What? Was he already dead? Yes. There's no way that's possible. Because I tackled him alive. So what does one minute matter? There's nothing that could have killed him in that minute. Breathing in the motive liquid. Flippy is a bad leader at this moment. Flippy's not the leader, Pete is. You want proof that something else could have killed Tom? Then how about the fact that given the minute you were holding Tom with a rope, the motive liquid could have killed him? Could it be? The rope Lou gave Mo was covered with the motive liquid? Considering how much Lou has been smiling at Mo's expense, it's only natural to assume so. I know I'll probably never be trusted again after this. Heck, my original plan was to surprise Bo with my third rope, kill him, and then save the two overboard tunes myself, but luck wasn't on my side. Well, I say that, but because of Tom, now I get to see Mo get executed like he deserves. You're right, Lou. You'll never be trusted after this. I thought you were a good tune. You were sassy and such, but on the side of justice, I trusted you even when you asked me a suspicious question. But I know, though, I now I know the real you. And to think how happy you are to be sending someone to their death, regardless if it's Mo or not, you disgust me. Hmm, fair enough. I'm not gonna argue with that. So, Flunky, pretty sure we're ready to vote now? Seems that's the case. Before we do vote, I just want to ask one last question. What would you want to ask, Surly? That third rope, I assume it was placed with the others in the gag shop? Yep, I assume you found all three then? Indeed we did, Lou. Let me guess, you noticed how it took me a while to give it to Mo in our retelling? Well, since I didn't want Mo to catch on to what I was doing, I made sure to keep that one clean until right before I needed it. After all, how the heck would I explain preparing three ropes, yeah? I'm going to die. Yep, you sure are, Mo. Congratulations, unless somehow Flunky actually gives you a chance to survive. I'm ready to vote too, Flunky. I think we all are. It is Mo! Mo did the crime. Ooh. Yay. Good job, Mo. You piece of trash. Get out of here. Unanimous decision besides one vote for Lou. No, I told him to do it! Oh, I told Lou to be careful instead of saying no, and he was gonna just kill him. Oh, what kind of prank? Oh, that's my fault. Oh, I see how it is. This is just one big ruse, isn't it? And he's just delusional now. Hmm. How... How can you be enjoying this? So flunky. What'll happen to Mo? What what do you mean? It means if Mo's execution could actually be survivable. Personally, I doubt Flunky would actually follow through with that, though maybe that's just my bias. He better, considering what you did to him, Mo at least deserves that. So you'd better not go back on your word, Flunky. Rightly said, Coach Buddy, Mo potentially getting to live after this would be insane. I don't care about your horrible excitement for that potential, Ricky. That's right. I'll, I'll live. I'll live. Well, Flunky, are you actually going to say whether or not Mo will actually have a chance to survive this? How stoically hilarious you of all tunes asked that question. Um, what's that supposed to mean? Simply put, well, he'll be put in as a major disadvantage for being the actual killer. The way Mo can survive his execution, 
is if you get killed in it instead. Excuse me? You Are you actually planning to place both Lou and Moe in a duel to the death? Hmm, not exactly correct. However, I had a duo execution prepared for every single one of you pairs in the chance you tried killing the soul tomb. Simply put, only one of you can survive. Hmm. Well, if I have the disadvantage, then I doubt Mo will stand a chance. Fine, I accept these terms, not like you'd be willing to change them anyway. Hmm, you really think you'd be able to truly outdo me, Lou? No. No, there's zero chance you'll get your wish. You'll just be dead in under a minute, and I'll be fine. There are no other possibilities. Looks like someone is really gonna die stuck in Delulu land, huh? Don't you mean Delulu land? You just shut up for once! This is really happening. Moo and Lo and Lou fighting to the death. Well, well, I believe we've stalled for enough time. Mo, the ultimate composer, and Lou, the ultimate scrapbooker. <laughs> I'm still quite surprised I get to actually use one of these dual executions. We get it, Flunky, just hurry it up. Let's see, let's give it everything we've got. For one of you, it's your time to die. I'll, I'll be victorious as always. Ooh, boy. Glue. Lou and Moe starring in the adhesive recital. he went I should have looked away just why I see I suppose Lou will be brought back to us soon I'm uh, I'm not staying for that me neither Harry and Paula left the trial room with old men following them golly talk about some major aim for Lou he completely demolished him I just I don't understand why you're Bessie walked out her words trailing off with her you better follow Bessie out, Riggy. I don't want to hear anything else from you. And miss out on Lou's first words after basically slaying two tunes. Ha! Ah, as if... Uh, you know what? You can have this one, Riggy. I'm done with today. Suit yourself, coach buddy. I believe I've seen enough today. Hmm. I'm not moving. And with Surly gone, only Flippy, Liggy, Flippy Riggy Giggles and I remain to wait for Lou. As we waited, I simply sat down on the floor. Why, Lou? Why? Why did you feel the need to do what you did? To take one's hatred to such an extreme? That hatred is the reason Tom is dead now. He really did save me and Flippy. Tom always did the right thing no matter what. Even if it costed him his life, he really was the best of all of us. And now that it's all over, having to hold my head up high and doing all that I could to solve his case, I can't hold it in any longer. I'm I'm here, and I don't get that luxury anymore. It's just so unfair. I just stayed there, not worrying about the amount of tears that fell from my face. It's just over. Everything is over, and everything that could have been. From the corner of my vision, I saw Flippy just standing there. He hasn't spoken at all since the execution. What is he thinking about? I don't have the willpower to go over there and ask him. Man, they're you're right. What about telling Coach Z to hang out with other people? Telling him about to, to telling Lou to hold on to the cork? There are a lot of different pathways in this game. After what seemed like forever, huh? It's quite humorous seeing you tunes just wait for something that won't happen. The only type of humor we cogs enjoy. 
for retention's sake, Lou won't be returning to you until the next day. Do whatever you please at this time. Hmm. Of course that Cretan flunky makes me wait for my chance to punch Lou right in the face. Bah! Now well, I'm even a bummer mood. I waited for nothing. And with that, the only ones left in the headquarters were... See you later, Protocol. Nice to meet you. Flippy, are you, you alright? I just can't keep sitting around anymore, Pete. What? What do you mean? I helped out Clef's plan so much, and now I got us caught up in Lou's. Meanwhile, you're the proof that I can get my act together. Because if the tune that literally loved Tom was able to put his logic first, then I don't have any more excuses. Flippy, did you not see me just now? But he left the headquarters without letting me provide a response. So that's how he feels. He's just so full of guilt. Clara, Clef, Mo, and Tom, they're all really gone. Hey Tom, wherever you are now, you wouldn't try to want me to cry for this long, would you? You'd want me to enjoy life, or however long mine may be. So I'll, I'll do that, Tom, for you, because... You were the love of my life, Tom. Oof. Save. Sometime yesterday. I was the one that helped him out, Surly. I see. Out of all the possibilities, the one that helped you figure this out... was me. Indeed, I'm sure you can figure things out on your end. However, I would believe it'd be dangerous to continue to be sending you messages in the case of my interference. Understood. I'll try to stay as safe as possible then. I however fear that with someone constantly at my side, something unfortunate may happen to me. Simply do whatever within reason is necessary. That is all. He stopped responding. That was intentional. It's unknown how secure this line of communication is. For all we know, the Cogs knew of them since the beginning. That would be... bad. Yes, Horse Tune. Bad would not be describing the severity justice. For now, all we can do is try to get a grasp of the situation from our end. Really? Why? What more can we do? We have no means of travel to wherever this killing game is taking place. We made a connection, right? That can do things. I'll admit it's a start, or being able to find a way to teleport to this location is another. Not only that, but what has your ally been doing during this whole time? He hasn't returned yet. I don't know. You don't know. Well, what about your allies? They're actual scientists, so they'd be good help. Well, maybe not the one that gave away this device to me. No, they don't need to be involved with any more of my problems. What do you mean? You didn't cause this, right? Well, I never would cause an event like this to occur directly. This wouldn't be the first time my selfish act actions resulted in events. Oh, I see. That's not something to pity, Horse Tune. What we need now is another plan, some way to destroy this killing game from the outside. After all, while I have no concrete hypothesis on their goal, it's better to stop this before it's too late. Okay, I have to ask this. Huh? What's your question? For someone realizing there's multiple of you, you seem really calm. Dr. Surly? I do not enjoy retelling my past, where I suppose I owe you an explanation. Oh? If it'll explain my last of surprise, then so be it. You don't need to know the whole story, so I'll make it as brief as possible. While Surly is part of my name, simply put, it's actually a first name, not a last one. Huh? But you're Dr. Surly. Yes, and there's a reason this is. Simply put, I do have a full name, and despite how much I ran from my situation, I still wanted to keep it as a fragment of my former identity. Former identity? Well, what do you mean? Look, Horse Tune, take this information any way you'd like, but I've run away from my identity in one of the most extreme ways possible. How does this in any way explain my lack of surprise? Simple. The identity I ran away from was Gyro Gearloos! Yes, I knew it! Oh my gosh! One of these machines produced various clones of myself, and the results? Well, as all experiments with so many variables, one would say they were mixed. 
I wouldn't be surprised if one of those clones had the same idea as I to start anew, considering we share the same brain structure. And even the fact that we both decided to just become surly isn't much of a surprise to me. I wonder what grave mistake he must have made to warrant it. Okay, well that was a lot to take in. Truth does that on a regular occasion. And regardless of how odd it may be, said truth cannot be changed, Horstoon. I guess I got what I asked for. I suppose you did. At this point, we can only wait for... His name was Jack, yeah? Correct. So... The rewritten machine! That's what the blueprints are! Wait a minute, what if this- what if the killing game is like... What if, like, the killing machine is a... is specifically like... Excuse me, the killing game was specifically made using the rewritten machine! Oh... Is there a specific reason you want to meet me here, Lord Loud and Clear? Mata Harry? I understand this is the closest building associated with the Toon Resistance to me. However, are you going to be able to fit in the door? Just, just wait a bit. I've gotten into doors of this size in my suit before. All right, if you say so. Get through the children. Ugh. Took longer than usual. However, there's a reason I'm a tad perturbed. I do sometimes wonder what your normal attire would be. I must be honest. Though you said something is perturbing you? That's not common. It's a troubling scenario, the biggest problem being the lack of information. Alright, I'm listening. To put it simply, Mata Harry, I received half of a document. A document I've never seen before. Oh? Of what, exactly? I'm not sure. It's only a bunch of numbers and seemingly the last step to some sort of sequence. Hmm, this doesn't seem to be any sort of COG code that I know of. Hmm, I see. Well, it's clearly written on blueprint paper, so perhaps it could be something belonging to the Looney Labs? That would make sense. I'm just unsure as to why one day it showed up. When you say showed up, what do you exactly mean by that? I found it in my mailbox, which is highly irregular. I see that. Well, what would you like me to do about this? I ask you to seek out any of the Looney Lab scientists. I can cover your duties while you are gone, or not for long. Very well. I could definitely use a break. I'm unsure if this will be a break, if this will be a break, Mata. The fact that someone used my living quarter found my living quarters to deposit this gives me a bad omen. So treat this as more of this a simple fetch quest. Something big could be at stake. Understood. I'll set out immediately. Your work was always appreciated. Ooh, this is getting good. Hmm, I still can't figure out where that came from. Such a mystery. I've had that old ripped paper for a while now. That science guy better come back with my paper. Well, it seems my analysis is done. Finally, you're back pr you think you're talking to another scientist? Ah, excuse me? Have I been tricked somehow? Dr. Dim? You thought it was another scientist, but it was me, Dr. Dim! I can't even be mad at this trickery. Harmless fun should never be denied. Although, if you were the one who sent over the ripped paper, do you actually make sense of it? Ah, well, if you're wondering about the paper, looks like something to do with the teleporting business, but it's something super specific. Hmm, I thought so as well. The problem being, why was I to deliver it? Oh, do you not want it? I can keep it. Ha! You wish this document was the, I, the... The reason I think there's something fishy going with the cogs in the first place. So the second chapter was the last one, right? Yes, I believe. I'll be taking that back. Oh, okay. Wait, so is there something going on with the cogs? Is that why your cool pumpkin friend needed my silly reader? In short, yes. I'd rather not go into detail, mostly since I don't have a good guess. Oh, if you'd like to... All, if all you have to say is what I already know, then I'll be making my leave now. Ah, good to see a Looney Lab scientist in here. Oh, multiple tunes seeking me out. I'm the super business science guy today. Ah, alright. I have a rather simple question for you, Dr. Dim. Is it not? Yep, that's the name. Okay, phew. What's the chef any scientists that joined our left since the last time we were informed? Oh, hold on a second. Just who might you be? You have quite the sophisticated uniform on. Ah, right. Not many non-cog fighters know me. I'm Mata Harry, a member of the Toon Resistance. So that's why you have a neat outfit. How do I get one? Kinda need to be a Toon Resistance Officer. Neato, where do I sign up? Okay, hold on, let's not get off track. I have this item that a scientist might figure out. Really, another one. What do you mean by that? This is a fun guy over here who just gave me half a blueprint. Don't just tell anyone what you- Hold on, you said half of a blueprint? Yep. What was the bottom half of one? Yep. I swear on everything. Holiday kind. Okay, first, you need to chill out. Secondly, I'm almost 100% sure I have the other piece. Y you do? 
Well, what are we waiting for? Let's combine them! <laughs> this... this is... So, you're saying you two were mysteriously given half of a full sheet? Yes, that's correct. As suspicious as these circumstances may seem, these are real instructions. It requires a contraption that includes the common portable hole. I must say, you made a little teleport holes anyway. Take a wild guess, Horse Tune. I can construct this not only easily, but quickly too. However, do we have any way to trust this? I'll be frank, the fact that whoever sent this to us knows the living sites is not only the top resistance officer, but a secretive, festive duck. It may not be robotic handwriting, however, it's incredibly suspicious. What, are you saying we do nothing? What will be the point? We have these instructions, Joint. I understand the desire to tackle this head on. However, blindly following this paper... Now hold on, Surly. I'm listening. I know I said it was suspicious, however, Kazam is right. We have no other lead. We have a direct connection to one of the contestants, do we not? It may be only with one, the reasoning I honestly don't know, how we can work with just this. You say that, but we have barely gotten anything. We don't know how the names of these other kidnapped tunes. Information is too sparse. Considering all the mechanisms, I'm almost sure this will provide us with a temporary solution to the problem. The only issue is... Oh, see, the only issue is... It's a one-way solution. Oh, man. Save that right here. Well... Well, that just certainly went from interesting to jaw-dropping. The fact that there may be two... That the fact that there's two Dr. Surleys... It makes me wonder, what if... What if the rewritten machine made a copy of every tune, and all the tunes that are in the killing game aren't the real ones? And those, all those others are still living back in their actual locations in Toontown. While this killing root game version of them are new people. Hmm. This is... This is something that I'll be thinking about for a while. I cannot wait for the next part to come out. Ooh. Well. Thank you all for coming along to experience this with me. I'm very happy to have seen this. But, uh, for now, we'll be- that'll be it. I'll be updating you guys when the next part of Toontown Rumpa comes out. So, tomorrow, we're going back to Ukulele. Be sure to stick around for that. And we'll be finishing that, I believe, on Monday or Tuesday. Then on Thursday, we've got our weird game. And then on Friday, we've got Smash again. So be sure to stick around for all of that. I'll be seeing you guys later. Have yourselves a very good night. Follow, support me on all these other places. I have commissions open. Look for those. I'll be seeing you guys later. Tell everybody where you watched me. And I'll be... S and have a good night.